It's time. Here we go. Haven't continued New Game Plus in a little bit. I'm the only one online because we don't have raid today, which means a whole evening of Stormblood Part Tree. Last time we liberated an entire fucking nation. And at the end, there were cutscenes that showed Big Gasp Gosetsu is alive. But so is Yatsuyu. The two fuckers who were supposed to have died in Doma Castle. Well, one of them's a fucker. And one of them's a nice lady. Haha. -ha. That was me making a joke because uh, Yatsuyu is a villain. And we're supposed to be sad that she's alive. But I think she's a nice, bad lady. Big funny, nice memes all around. I'm on a I'm on a fucking warpath to get back to Shadowbringers because I want to re-experience that story. At least, at least quit the Scions too. She was like, "Hey yo, can't be impartial. Love my country too much. Fucking off. Hey bye." Come to see how we're getting on. We've made good progress since we took back Alamiga. There's one big issue we still have to address. Leadership. The Domans had Lord Hien ready and willing to take the throne, but we've got no one like that here. Theodoric was our last ruler, and he wasn't called the Mad King for nothing. <sighs> Suffice it to say, our people have had their fill of kings, which means we need to find a new way forward. If only it were that easy. Everyone and his uncle has an opinion. For the time being, we're just going to have to keep leaning on General Aldin and the Alliance for support, and see if we can't find a solution together. Something tells me we're going to be hosting a lot of meetings in the near future. But if that's what it takes, I'm ready to talk till my jaw aches. The reach is yours, Nargo. Don't do anything I wouldn't. Aye, aye, Commander. Been searching all over for you. But don't worry, it's nothing bad. That said, this might not be the best place to talk. Will you join me? I'll get to the point. Might you be interested in a spot of adventure? After all. We were adventurous before we were scions, were we not? After routing the Imperials and liberating our amigo, I reckon we've earned a bit of respite, don't you? And what better way to spend it than by returning to our roots? So, what say you? Shall we call on Alphino and go adventuring? Twist my arm, why don't you? Right then, let's go and find Master Leveilleur. Actually, leave that to me. I want you fresh for our little adventure. Wait for us by the 8th right, and we'll be along shortly. See you there. Greetings, Kiliana. 
It would seem we are to accompany Arnveld on some manner of escapade. Have you any idea what we've gotten ourselves into? Allow me to explain. It'll be something of a history lesson, but I'll try to be brief. No snoring, if you please. Now, the events I would speak of occurred before the occupation, back when Alamigo was still a monarchy, and Theodoric sat, th sat the throne. A unique, brutal despot, by all accounts. And he was. The King of Ruins suffered no rivals, real or imagined, and his dispute with the monks of the first ended with Rogger's Reach being burned to the ground. In the latter years of his rule, he was seized with unshakable belief that unseen forces were conspiring to steal his crown, and so he ordered that every soul with a claim to the throne be executed including his own family. The wealth of the poor sods he put to death became the property of the king, and it's said that these royal treasures were hoarded somewhere in the palace. Thus was born the legend of the Mad King's Trove. Ah, I believe I see the direction our adventure is to take. I assume you have mind to unearth his hidden bounty. You assume correctly! Would I also be correct in assuming that this legend is widely known? Others must surely have gone in search of your prize, tempting as it seems. Well, of course, we wouldn't be the first to make the attempt. Following Alamigo's liberation, more than a few eager soldiers turned the palace upside down in hopes of claiming an easy fortune. But even after scouring every room from dawn till dusk, they uncovered not a single coin. Their gold lust drained away as quickly as it had come, and the legend of the Mad King's Trove remained simply that, a legend. But I see you have no intention of letting the story end there. Self-respecting adventurer would imagine the three of us delving into a decades-old mystery. Tell me the thought doesn't set your heart to racing. The news of Doma and Alamigo's liberation has kindled the flame of revolution in every corner of the Empire. Here the Imperial Province of Dalmasca has already risen up in rebellion. It means the Garleans must surely have their hands full. What better time than to now to indulge in such a diversion? Tell us, involved. Have we any clues as to where we might begin our search? <coughs> well, judging just by how the other treasure hunters fared, nosing about the palace isn't going to get us anywhere, so we'll probably need to uh, ask around. Would that be another way of saying no? <laughs> well, yes. I see. In that case, I shall pay a visit to, Ali uh, to the Allied Archivists and request access to their records seized from the Imperials. The Garlands are meticulous about such things. If they uncovered the trove during their occupation, the event is certain to have been recorded. In the meantime, the two of you can track down those who worked as palace servants and officials in the Theodoric's day. Given that they would have been at least 20 at the time, you'll be looking for people who have seen 40 summers or more. Anything they can tell you about the king and his bloody deeds may prove useful, so be sure to listen well. Arnvald, pray try your luck in the fringes and the peaks, whilst Kenliana makes the rounds in the Alamegan quarter. Ha! And there I was thinking I was the party leader. Not that I mind, of course. Let's be about it, eh? We can meet afterwards at Galbard's Gate. Arnvald, you will never be the party leader when the Warrior of Light and or Alfino are involved. I'm sorry to say. The palace? No, not me, less. Surely you've heard stories of the Mad King. He's told public executions up uh, on the divine audience. Anyone, and I mean anyone, suspected of conspiring against the crown was flung from the top of those steps. I used to say that I stayed as far away from the palace as possible. You want to hear an old maid's stories, do you? Aye, well, most of what I know of the Mad King is common knowledge. You can only see His Royal Majesty when he deigned to attend the executions he'd ordered, and after a while, even watching his enemies die wasn't enough to coax him out of hiding. They say he started seeing assassins in every shadow, and wouldn't set foot outside the palace walls. I was offered work there as a royal servant once, but the mere thought of it left me in a cold sweat. Aye, I served at the pleasure of King Theodoric, and I lived to tell the tale. One of the palace's guards I was. 
Truth be told, it was a dark chapter in my life, and one I'd sooner forget. Hardly a night went by when we didn't hear the blood-curdling screams echoing from the inner chambers. Of course, we were under orders to ignore. We'd stand still as statues, trying not to imagine what horrors were unfolding within. Uh, if you're hell-bent on finding out what happened in the palace, head down the street here and ask old Arnold, who's the king's head scribe. Arnold, I cannot see you. It is dark. <laughs> yes, I'm Arnold. What do you want from me? Hmm. You would have me dredge up some decidedly unsavory memories. Yet if Alamigo is to move forward, he must needs acknowledge the misdeeds of the past. Very well, I should tell you what I remember. I take you know of Theodoric's paranoia and the public executions of his kinsmen. Those were terrible enough, but in his last days, the king's fevered mind settled upon an even grislier method of disposal, which only a chosen few were unfortunate enough to witness. His majesty ordered the court thaumaturge to unleash a vile curse upon the remaining members of the royal family, a magic which transformed them into fiends of hideous aspect, resulting monstrosities were then cast into the darkness below the palace. Even now, my sleep is troubled by nightmares. If other of Theodoric's blood were prone to share his madness, they may hap it a kindness that the monarchy ended with him. Since we're all here, why don't we share what we've learned? Allow me to begin, then. As promised, I scoured the Imperial records for any mention of fantastic treasures, and found precisely none. It is possible, I suppose, that a corrupt official deliberately hid the fact of the Trove's discovery, hoping to enrich himself, but I find it rather unlikely that so valuable a find would stay secret for long. I conclude that our prize either does not exist, or that the Imperials somehow overlooked it. But what of you, Kinliana? Were your investigations any more fruitful? Turned into monsters. What could he mean by this darkness beneath the palace, I wonder? I met an old man in Alighieri who spoke of the palace's subterranean prison, but he said not of cursed abominations. The Imperial Archives were also silent on the subject of fiends inside the palace grounds. Could the scribe fellow been spinning her yarn, do you think? Do you believe in Kinliana? Here seemed genuine. He was afraid. That does lead credence to the tale, though I'm not sure how that helps in our search. Do not be so hasty. Arnold's anecdote may very well have told us where the trove is hidden, but ere I share my theory, there is a matter I would clarify. Arnvald, you spoke of light-hearted adventure, but I sense a deeper motive for this expedition. Why are you so intent on finding this treasure? It wasn't all pretense, I swear it, but you're right. My father was in the Imperial Army, a man of Garlean blood. I trust you know what I mean when I say that my Alamegan mother did not welcome my arrival. As I grew, she would check my brow over and over, convinced that a spot on my skin was emer an emerging third eye, like the kind you see in pure blood Garleans. My mother did not care for this taunting reminder of my heritage and took up a knife, or paint serves to cover the scar. In the end, she turned me out in the street, and I was left to hunt the alleyways of Alamigo, a feral haunt the alleyways of Alamigo, a feral child who got what he needed through begging, cunning, or worse. The best I can say about the years that followed is that I survived, but I hated the animal I'd become. Eventually, I left the city behind me and joined a group of refugees bound for the other side of the wall. It was then that I turned to adventuring, and that road led me into the company of the Scions. I tell you this that you can understand. I know all too well what poverty and hunger can do to a person. I draw steel on ordinary folk for a measly crust of bread. With the Odric's gold, I could spare my countrymen the shame of living like that. Thank you, Arnveld, and I apologize. I cannot have been pleasant to recall, but I felt it best to clear our in our to be clear in our intentions. Well, Kinliana, are you content to surrender the treasure to Allenvard's noble cause and claim the thrill of adventure as your reward? Yeah, dude, I'm already rich. <laughs> and I should be glad to tell you my theory on the resting place of the Mad King's Trove, if you are the mindset to hear it.
Actually, it may happen be, would be better if first we adjourned to a more suitable location. In that case, a rival treasure hunter overhears our plans, you mean. Good thinking. That was not exactly the reason, but it's certainly a valid concern. Let us reconvene on the southern edge of Loch Seld. Going up, going up, going up, going up. Forgive me, it was not my intention to draw out, uh, out proceedings. I simply wish to have, it, have the lock in sight when I explain things. Prior to the great flood of the sixth umbral calamity, the salt lakes you see before you were yet dry ravines. And this, believe it or not, was the site of the ancient city of Scala, which rose and fell during the fifth astral era. From what we know of the period, the city was already deserted by the time the waters began to rise, having been all but destroyed by war. Yet it ruins, its ruins remain to this day at the bottom of Loch Seld. It is my belief that the darkness beneath the palace, mentioned by Theodoric's former scribe, was not a reference to the prison, but to a palace, to a place still further below, the ruins of Scala. I further surmise that the Mad King's unfortunate kinsmen were cast down there not simply out of desire to punish them, but to discourage exploration. Theodoric wanted to keep the ruins secure. You're saying they were meant to guard the Mad King's Trove? Precisely. And once we know the court thaumaturge was involved, we can safely assume that any entrance to the old city will have been magically concealed. Which would explain how a legion of Imperial soldiers and the gods knows how many Alamegans never found a trace of the Trove. We, however, have certain advantages which they do not enjoy. Ileana, would you be so good as to swim down to the bottom of the lock and search for an underwater route into the ruins? While you do that, Arnvald and I will seek out an ensorcelled portal within the palace. We have certain advantages where our warrior of light, our pet warrior of light, can breathe underwater. Ellie ho! Discover a passage that appears to lead into the palace foundations. Press on and find where it goes. Okay, the Sergei dog underwater looks kind of dope. You come to a worn stone door, standing temptingly ajar. It would appear you have found an entrance into the subterranean ruins. Inyana, it's Elfinet. We have searched the prison beneath the palace and found a door concealed by enchantments. Have you ought to report? Yeah, dude. A fucking door. You believe it leads to the ruins? Excellent. Then I propose we proceed from our respective entry points and look to meet somewhere in the middle. Oh, come on, you two. We might as well make it a race. Victory goes to the first adventure to find the treasure. Godspeed. You really want to race me, Ironvald? You want to race me as I schmoove my way through the round city of Scala? God damn it. That's a fucking. Nope. Abort. Someday I will remember first try to put on the, uh,. Scenario cutscenes.
No, I went backwards on accident, you fool. How to fight these guys.
Oh, no. Damn it. I was really hoping to kill it before this went off. Oh well. There go all of my buffs. I <laughs> don't think I'll be able to kill all of these in time. But I'm sure I won't have enough damage to kill me at this level. Not even remotely close. gear for the grand company seals gotta get my minion loot boxes <laughs> rando crates final fantasy my friend a funny meme and they apparently very much appreciated it. Or one for funny memes. Wow, these guys actually kind of hurt. Good for them. They, they brought me down like 40k out of, you know, 120k. The Echo's so silly. Continue to solo as much as I possibly can until I no longer can solo. I think Shadowbringers will be the limit. I probably will need to have real people with me in Shadowbringers. But luckily, they realized that people don't like playing with uh, real people in this multiplayer game. So they gave us the capability of doing dungeons with NPCs. I'll just have to worry about... Uh, um, fucking trials.
Hang out. He hit me. Why are you using your tail attack? There's no one behind you. It's just me. It's just me, buddy. You ever just fix someone's curse by killing them? Oh, well, she's so sad. This is the beginning of a very sad warrior of light. Every time they do something that they used to be happy about, they'll just be sad. Are you all right? Aye. Aye. Everything's still attached. Ah. It seems both our paths led here. Very good. We spent altogether too much time fleeing fiends horrid and numerous. How fared you? Much the same, then. It would appear this place is yet inhabited by King Theodoric's kin, or what is left of them. The work of terrible magics, I fear. Terrible, aye. But their misfortune is our... fortune? Quite. By the twelve, there is even more than I imagined. Wait to see the look on Lisa's face. Thanks for believing in me, you two. Arnvald and I forged ahead the fastest pace we could manage, but it was no surprise I was not surprised to find you waiting for us. I suppose it serves us right for challenging the Warrior of Light. Next time we should agree on some manner of handicap. Ah, we may have lost, Alfino, but think of what we found. What? I'm still reeling at the sight of that mountain of riches. What? Like how you reeled at the sight of that floating specter, you mean? Should have seen him scream, Ginliana. But m might we dwell on such moment... M must we dwell on such momentary lapses? We found the Mad King's Trove, and that's all that matters. Alfino's afraid of ghosties. All jesting aside, we must tell people the good news, and I think Lee should be the first. Seconded, there is to be a meeting and of representatives from across Alamigo, so she is sure to be in the city. Shall we seek her out? Don't... teleport anymore. Go man away! Oh, you three look pleased with yourselves. What have you been up to? I'm glad you asked, Lise. I'm pretty sure you're going to like the answer. We found you a fuck ton of money. You're joking. The Mad King's Trove? I thought it was a myth. So did plenty of people, but they didn't have Kinliana and Alfino in their party. The credit for finding it should really go to them. 
As for what to do with it all, I vote that it goes towards alleviating the suffering of Alamingo's poor. God, if there's as much as you say... Arnvald did not exaggerate, I assure you. We could not hope to carry even a fraction of it out on our own. I've taken the liberty of sketching out a rough map of the ruins. If you will assemble a squad of your most trusted freedom fighters, they should be able to follow the route to where the treasure lies. Understood. I'll make sure every coin is accounted for, and that goes for the spending of it as well. Thank you. Well, there's one more thing. When the time comes to draw up a plan for distributing the spoils, I would ask that you consult Alfinu. I don't have a head for, the, for details. I'm not educated. I see that simply handing out sacks of gill won't solve everything, but I couldn't rightly tell you what to do instead. Oh, I know the feeling. I'd welcome any advice you could give us, Alfino. Of course, I shall be at your disposal. Commander, we've got a problem. Deep breaths, tell me what happened. A mob's gathered outside headquarters, and they've started making demands. You'd best come and see for yourself. Like hells we will! We know who you've got in there! We're not leaving till you hand her over! Bring her out! Bring her out! What's going on? Someone let slip about Fedola. It's true then! The bitch really is in there! I knew it! I bloody knew it! We demand vengeance! Bring her out! Today we butcher the butcher! No, you. Butcher the... Come on, you don't mean that! We'd be no better than the Imperials if you'd all just calm down! Calm down! That monster and her thrice damned skulls dragged my man from our home and beat him to death in the street! I and my dad! That bitch has spilt enough blood to fill a lock! We all know her crimes. She's a traitor and a murderer. How many of your resistance friends have died at her hands, eh? And here you are, protecting her! So that's what all the fuss is about. Hearken to me, brothers and sisters of Alamigo. Hey, who's this? That... That's the Bull of Alamigo. My friends, you are not alone in your anger, your grief, your despair. For it is mine as well. That gnawing pain in your breast, it is enough to bring an old bull to his knees. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think not only of the family and friends who were cut down before your very eyes, but to think also of the ones who were abducted. The ones who may yet live. Where were they taken? What became of them? These questions demand answers. I share your thirst for justice, for vengeance. But we will gain only fleeting satisfaction if we give in to our base appetites. We will never know the truth. Now is the time that we, the people of Alamigo, must decide what manner of nation we will build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. When they look to our example, will they see a people who held fast to their principles or one who cast them aside when tried? I say to you, it is our responsibility to give these prisoners a fair trial that they might answer to all of Alamigo the Gallians called us savages, and I'll be damned if we prove them right. I know you're right, I do, but I can't.
Raubon saves the day. What a good boy. My thanks, Raubon. Listening to their anger, I could feel myself being swept away. It was a difficult tide to stem. It was that same rage which brought us to our feet and carried us to victory. But now the war is over, and the unspent fury is being channeled into vengeance. Aye, it's not just here. We've reports of mobs forming all over. They've been targeting folk known to have cooperated with the Garleans. It starts with insults most often, but someone picks up a stone. Some industrious souls even try and seek out the graves of Xenos and his officers. It was grim. I want to build a country where everyone, regardless of race or origin, can live side by side in peace. But maybe the time isn't right. People just aren't ready. That doesn't mean I'm not going to try. The representatives will be here soon, and I'll be damned if I'm going to give up before I've even begun. Who are these representatives, exactly? Oh, village elders, refugee leaders, and the like. Wouldn't be right for us to dedicate the nation's future, decide the dictate, Jesus Christ, English. It wouldn't be right for us to dictate the nation's future on our own, so we planned a summit of sorts. We even invited the Ananta and the Kikern to participate. Alamigo stands at a crossroads, and this meeting will decide which path it takes. The matter of Fordola's sentence cannot be suffered to disrupt proceedings. And let us execute her and be done with it. She asked herself to be put to death. Nago, I already explained why we wouldn't do that. Sending her to the gallows might satisfy people right now, but where would it end? Would we round up everyone who collaborated? And everyone who didn't resist? There would be no one left, and we'd be no better than Theodoric and Xenos. Begging your pardon, but might I be allowed to speak with Fordola? Only I caught a glimpse of her past. A moment of it, anyway, during the fight. She's done terrible things, aye, unforgivable things, but in some ways she's a victim of the circumstances in which she was born, and that's something I can understand. Alright, speak with the prison guard when you're ready, and I'll come and join you. I want to talk to her too. I'll return to my other duties then. We've barely begun to investigate the faci facility where they gave Fordola her powers. Be fairly warned, friends. She will test you. Don't let your emotions color your judgment when she does. I'm going to run to the restroom, uh, because this cutscene coming up is actually one of my favorites. So, I want to make sure I'm not dying for that. Be right back. Alright, I'm back. With the commander's permission to enter, then. Yes, I do. Yeah, there's nothing... It's not a particularly, like, flashy cutscene, like a lot of my other favorites, but, uh, there's just... just like, a little detail in it. It just always made me kind of happy.
Plus, I just think Fordola's neat. <laughs> So many visitors. Come to have a good laugh, have you? Or do you mean to put me out of my misery? To finish what you started? It's about bloody time. That's not why we're here, no. Do you remember what I said? How I promised you you'd live long enough to see us win our freedom? Well, I meant it. And not to mock you, either. You're wasting your time. All of this is pointless! There's no reason to keep me alive, and you know it! I killed your men. I killed my men! And you know what my only regret is? That I didn't kill you when I had the chance! That's a lie, and you know it! You think we can't tell what you're trying to do? That we're blind? Now, you're a fool, but you're not stupid. You're ruthless, relentless. You give up anything and everything to get what you want. You didn't come this far, climbing over the bodies of your own brothers and sisters just to piss it all away. I see you, Fedora. I see you for what you are. So little. Come along, Padola. We mustn't be late. The Imperial Viceroy will be attending today's banquet. All right. Father, what's Lord Gaius like? Is he nice? Are you friends? There you go again with all your questions. Lord Gaius is a great and honorable man who looks after all of Alamigo. He's very busy, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss our chance to see him. Filthy tinhead lovers. That man call us. The little tin-head lover doesn't know what she is, eh? A traitor, sweetheart. A backstabbing bitch who'd gladly betray her kith and kin to gnaw on what few scraps the Imperials deign to toss her. Like your bastard father and whore mother. That's not true! My parents are good people! They've never done anything like that! Oh, but they were quick to help themselves and their bitch spawn, weren't they? You're just as guilty as them! Dola. Traitors! Please! You have to do something! My husband and daughter are in danger! Soldiers of the Imperial Army are under no obligation to intervene in the disputes of arms. We're citizens! We have rights! Ah. I'm scared! It's all right. It's all right. They don't understand, but they'll see in time. They'll see that this is the only way to survive. 
Traitors! Traitors! Oh, let the savages have their fun. There'll be more compliant once they've tired themselves out. Fadola, please! You already have citizenship! Why would you want to become a soldier? Oh, gods! What have you done to your face? Forgotten it already, have you? I'm honoring Father's memory. By telling the world that you know better than a common savage! Am I the wrong mother? Are any of us? Can't you see? Citizenship means nothing to them. If you're not a pure blood Galleon, you're no different from any other savage. So I'll play the part. I'll join the Legion and I'll make them respect me. And when the mob see that, they'll think twice before throwing their stones. Ansfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn. It's time. It'll be hard. Humiliating. They'll try to break us. Send us crawling back to our own kind. But we'll live, no matter what. We'll bleed for them, die for them if we have to. We'll do whatever it takes to be free! So, you mean to play the part one last time, eh? The unrepentant traitor whose death will serve to unite the people? Shut up. You had every chance to kill yourself. Fashion a noose from your clothes. Wait for the guards to leave you alone long enough to slip it over your neck. I said shut up! Oh, but then it would have all been for nothing, wouldn't it? Whatever it takes, that's what you said. Been in my head, have you? Had a little peek at my past. And what, a few stolen memories tell you everything you need to know, do they? Don't you dare patronize me! You don't know a god's damned thing about the life I've led! Bastards that killed him. The bastards that let it happen. My father deserved better. I swore I'd do whatever it took to make them pay. And this is what I like about this cutscene. That finally someone sees all the shit that we went through.
much. Too much for anyone. The things that they've done to you. The lies. The betrayal. The endless fighting. Yet there you stand. Unbroken. How? Why? For those I have lost, for those I can yet save. Damn you. Damn you all. You still have time, Cordola. Think about how you want to spend it. Let's go. Yeah, the Warrior of Light's been through some shit. Especially for those of us like me who expand their character into something more than just a, you know, silent protag. So that Square Enix acknowledged that in a cutscene where someone else with the Echo finally sees all of the shit that we've had to deal with. I thought it was a very nice touch. Especially since it's only starting. <laughs> it's gonna get a lot worse from here. <laughs> I don't know that we solved anything exactly, but we've given Fordola something to think about, at least. Aye, and I found something new to think about, too. I don't know about you, Kinliana, but the visions only come to me every now and then. And the way Fordola kept wincing, though, I get the feeling she's having them almost all the time. It's a lot of bad memories to deal with. Hmm, I wonder. Could there be some fundamental difference between one who was born with the Echo and one who has been artificially imbued with it? Well, the Immortal Flames have been scouring that research facility ever since the Liberation. There's a chance they might have some answers for us. General Alden's over there seeing the investigation. Let's go pay him a visit, shall we? General Alden is inside, eh? Will you be joining him? Yes. Yes, I will. Excuse me. What news? You spoke with Fordola, I take it? Yes. As expected, she didn't say very much, but it wasn't a total waste of time. Arnveld noticed something odd about her. He thinks she might be having visions almost constantly, which is not how the Echo normally works. Have you found anything here which might explain why it's so different for her? Hmm. I've been hard-pressed just to organize the research materials, let alone study them. To be frank, I'd welcome the Scion's expert assistance, if you have time to lend a hand. Idle conversation prohibited. Eating and drinking pro the fallen scrap of parchment appears to be a list of facility regulations, but nothing of any interest. The device in which Cryonel was held seems even more ominous now that you know its purpose. The surrounding pods are marked supply subject, while this one bears the master the label master subject. The Ironworks received a request from the Alliance to analyze these devices, and have been recording everything of interest. Did you notice the labeling? All the pods are designed to drain the ether of the occupant. Save that one right there. Unlike the others, the interior has been fitted with an array of sensors to measure etheric waveforms. Whatever purpose, however, I couldn't tell you.
So many bodies. Every one of them a victim of these experiments. Do you show any signs of external injury? From what we've been able to determine, they perished from forcible aether extraction. Such a miserable way to die. I know little and less of science, so any light you can shed on this facility's operations would be much appreciated. Yimliana, shall we start with you? Taken in combination with the testimonies of Kryle and Thancred, I do begin to see exactly what the Imperials were attempting here. The enhancement procedures entailed infusing a single candidate with ether siphon from a multitude of supply subjects. As for the master subject, in this case Kryle, the patterns of her etheric activity would provide the model upon which they would artificially engineer the candidate's aura. In other words, they were trying to recreate Kryle's echo. I believe so, which would explain our prisoner's present state. Kryle is possessed of an un unrivaled ability to hear the whispers of the soul, and it seems probable that the procedure in gendered the same acute sensitivity in Fordola. These soldiers who guard Fordola, many of them lost their friends and family to the skulls. And there's a sentry at her door night and day. She can't help sensing their thoughts and seeing their past. But you don't just see their past, you live it. All the emotions, all the pain. Imagine what it would do to you. we the same again. Indeed. You may recall, Yazale was completely transformed by a single glimpse of Faris Felger's past. Ordola has been forced to experience the agony of those whose lives she destroyed. The guilt must be unbearable. That explains her request to be executed. Sounds to me like a kind of justice. Regardless, she can suffer on for now. We have more pressing matters to consider. If the results of these experiments have been relayed back to Garlemald, there will be not to stop the Empire from repeating the trick. They could give the echo to anyone. Entire legion. We must be ready. We must learn what we can of these gods forsaken procedures, and Fordola remains our best source of information. She'll not be getting her wish. Not yet. Right. Be faithless. If you're to convince others to follow you, you must believe what you're telling them. People will respond to passion, but not if it's feigned. I understand. Thank you, General. We should leave the flames to it. Let's go. I go looking for answers about the Echo and end up getting schooled by Raubon. Yet more evidence that I don't know what I'm doing. No wonder people listen to him and not me. General Alden is a veteran count of countless campaigns, Lise. You cannot compare yourself to a commander of his experience. I know, but I also know that I couldn't have convinced the mob to give up and go home. It makes me realize just how much we rely on his authority and how much I still have to learn. I wonder what he'll do now that everything's settled. I mean, his homeland. After going through the trouble of winning it back, why do you not want to stay? There's a quandary which countless refugees now face. To continue the life they built in Ulda, or start again in the land of their birth. Nana, a moment. I am newly returned from Ulda with a message from Sultana. The Grace desires an audience with you. She understands that you have responsibilities here, but asks that you visit the palace at your earliest convenience. Well, I must away and attend to other business. Until next time, my friends. An audience with a Sultana. Depending on the nature of her consultation, this might be the perfect opportunity to inquire about the General's future plans. Yes, we'd all like to know about those, Alfie No, but not everyone's as comfortable interrogating royalty as you. Take no notice of him, Kimlian. Well, the question of how to put the Mad King's treasure to good use shows no sign of answering itself. Shall we be about it, Arnveld? 
At your beck and call. And I should be getting back to my own tasks. I'll organize a squad to head down to the ruins and then start preparing for the big meeting. Oh, and send out my regards, Kiliana. And ours too, if you please. We shall see you on your return. Back to Ulda. My lady, it was an honor to face you in the tournament. Since that day, I have spent my every spare moment in the practice yard, striving to attain some fraction of your skill with the blade. Ah, forgive me. You are here for your audience with the Sultana. Please proceed. That's a reference to the level 70 Paladin quest, which we haven't done in New Game Plus yet. I do plan to do the class quests uh, at the end of it all, like all the side stuff. I thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. The liberation of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences, and there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. I speak of Rauban and his future. All know the tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the Syndicate and General of the Immortal Flames. Yet though he has come to call Ulda home, it will never be his homeland. He is a son of Alamigo. And now that she is free, I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her. Indeed, I had resigned myself to his loss. Suffice it to say, I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. Whether Rauban chooses to remain in Ulda or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. Yet, how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? It is past time that I learned to discharge my duties as a Sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes, and hear the wind with my own ears. Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Wonderful! Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous, and I will join you outside. Big yards. <sighs> Hello there, Lady Lilara, from our past. A chance you remember Lilara, the merchant's daughter? This is the persona, I assume, when I venture beyond the palace walls to observe my subjects unnoticed. Ordinarily, Papa Sean would accompany me, but for this particular outing, I need an advisor, not a minder. That is why I requested your company. Over the course of your many adventurers, 
Adventurers, you have met people from all walks of life in every corner of Eorzea, and I would make use of your worldly experience. Now, let's be on our way. Our first destination is Stone's Throw, just beyond the gate of Nald. Oh, Lady Lilara. We saw near the Sultan Tree. We began our days as baby gladiator. Look upon this procession of tattered tents. These refugees camp in squalor at the mercy of the elements and at Thanalan's, pred and Thanalan's predators both. The city's mighty walls offer safety, but the streets overflow with people as it is, and unless blessed by the hand of Nald himself, no refugee could ever hope to afford a dwelling in Ulda. Twenty years have passed since the fall of Alamigo, and five since the calamity, yet the plight of the poor has grown more desperate, not less, as Sultana the blame falls on me. Hands have yet been tied, your grace. Yes, my authority is limited, and that is an obstacle I must work to overcome. So we press on, but follow the road to the unholy hair. Unholy air. 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 It was here, in this wholly unremarkable place, that my mother and father met their doom. I was but a child at the time. My parents were returning from an inspection of our interests in eastern Thanaland when an untimely rock slide crushed their carriage. To this day, it is not certain if the incident was a simple misfortune or an expertly planned assassination. Raban once offered to reopen the investigation and bring me the truth he assumed I must surely crave, but I refused. Even if my parents' deaths were orchestrated by the monetarists, we could only have brought their hirelings to justice. The true villains, those who plotted to put me on the throne as a, a biddable puppet, were ever beyond our reach. Thus did I plan to strip the merchants of their power and place our nation in the hands of its citizens, quite unaware of the consequences my action would have for you and yours. I shudder to think of how many goodly souls paid the price for my naivety. But I am no longer a child reciting words with witless obedience. I will not be used as a pawn in the monitorous damnable games. Ugh, forgive my outburst. You're one of the few people to whom I feel I can freely speak my mind. Come, let us return to Ulda and visit the Colosseum. From the moment I became Sultana, I found myself thrust into an endless parade of document signing and ceremonies. For years, I simply signed where I was told to sign, and sat where I was told to sit, blissfully oblivious to what any of it meant. Yet one good thing did come from that ignominious chapter in my life, for it was during an official visit to the Colosseum that I first met Raban. The match I'd been invited to attend was not at all what I expected. They pitted the Bull of Alamigo against some dozen or so rival gladiators. Blinkered though I was, I would not stand for so obvious an injustice, and demanded to see a fair fight, one man against another, and my royal wish was duly granted. It was not until later that I learned of the gambling ring, which had been arranged for Raban to die on the sands that day. Regardless, my intervention meant that Raban had but a single opponent to dispatch, which he duly did, and when he knelt before me to receive the winner's purse, he swore that he would one day offer me his blade in service. Surrounded as I was by liars and manipulators, I confess I dismissed it as a pleasant piece of theatre. But as you know, Raban is a man of his word. Though it took him another five years of fighting on the blood sands, he amassed a fortune so great as to buy not only his freedom, but a seat on the syndicate. And then I had my blade.
And I get to go see that. I love uncontrolled past delving. You mustn't! The danger is too great! Please, Your Grace, come back! I beg of you! <laughs> it seems you're the one who needs looking after, Master Shell. <laughs> Grab on! Your Grace. I have kept the promise made. So you have. And in turn, so too shall I keep mine. With your winnings, you have become one of the six most wealthy souls in all Ulda. And so, as tradition dictates, Raubin Aldin, you have earned yourself a seat on the Syndicate. May your new station garner you still greater glories. I am honored, Your Grace, and vow to serve with every fiber of my being from this day till my life. Long live the Sultana, and long live Ulda! Words cannot well express what that man means to me. There are others who care deeply for my well-being, of course. Papa Sean's love for me is that of a grandsire to his grandchild. But upon matters of governance, I cannot turn to bodyguards and maidservants for counsel. Raubon, with the authority of his syndicate position, was the first sword I could wield. He was the only edge which could cut the strings that bound me. We must make haste. My absence will not go unnoticed by the Sultan Sworn for long, and there are other places I would visit. To the Arzeneth Ossuary. Those were words. Hello, cat. If you would like to snuggle, you're welcome to come up and do so. Come in. You are good. When the calamity threatened, Raban led the Alliance's forces into battle in the plains of Cardinal, and I remained here. I prayed with all my heart that Archon, Louis, Archon Louis Soi would have the power to rouse the Twelve. Since that day, I have made a custom of visiting the shrine during each of my little excursions. Here I seek the blessing of Thal, reflect upon my choices, and ask myself if I am fulfilling my duties as Sultana. You are rightly celebrated as a champion because you have led the line in a hundred battles for the good of Eorzea. In much the same way, I believe the measure of a monarch lies in how she leads her people in times of adversity. I am to be the sul a sultana worthy of the name, and not turn a blind eye to the troubles facing Ulda. I've chosen my path, Kinliana. With Alamigo now freed from imperial chains, I finally see a way to aid the refugees. Already many displaced Alamigans seek to begin the long trek home. And as you will know, our outer son's school shall be waiting to accept any who wish to learn new trades. Realistically, however, it will take years for such training to yield tangible benefits. 
But we do not have years. These people will need shelter and employment if they are to survive, and this time the Uldan Treasury shall provide. Precisely where and how to allocate ne the necessary funds is, of course, another question. Well, why not seek advice of one who employs refugees? A wise suggestion. I have a visit to the Gold Saucer is in order. Its proprietor is a member of the Syndicate, and he is one of the few who pay refugees a fair wage. I wonder, are you acquainted with Godbert Manderville? Then I need not explain his eccentric nature. Let us make our way to the landing, and I will see that word is sent to the Gold Saucer. Godbert should be only too glad to receive us. Oh, Godbert. I still have to finish the Manderville quest line. I'm pretty sure I'm still in the ARR content. It's just so long. Be out of curiosity. Yep, what price of victory? I'm still on the fucking level 50. Uh, Manderville. Quest line. Oh, the airship line. I've ridden aboard a public airship before, but this should be my first visit to the Gold Saucer. I must confess to some excitement. Oh god. Baby Potato's first adventure to the most scandalous place on the planet. There's definitely an Aether right there. I don't know why I couldn't see it with my blind ass eyes. You know what? Fuck it. Just take the. <laughs> just take the fucking airship. <laughs> Probably cost less. Nanamo goes to Vegas. I heard descriptions of its splendor, yet I never dreamed it would be so bright and inviting. No, I couldn't possibly. We did not come here to fritter away the royal coin. Godbert will be expecting us. Come, let's head directly to the lounge and ignore these... These gaudy temptations. But you don't you sure you don't want to gamble, Nanamo? It sounds like lots of fun. <laughs> uh I believe this is where we are to meet Lord Manderville. Shall we sit while we await his coming? My apologies, Your Grace. I have kept you waiting. No apologies are necessary, Godbert. My request was sudden, and you were kind to make yourself available at such short notice. When my son's good friend and the Sultana herself come calling, there's no more important engagement. As for the purpose of my visit, I would have your thoughts on how the Crown might best aid the refugees residing in Vanilan. You are aware, I am sure, that many Alamigos displaced sons and daughters long to return to their newly liberated homeland, and you are also aware of how they will suffer without shelter and work to sustain them. I would use our nation's wealth to spare them that suffering. What advice have you for me on the matter of how I might best, it might best be distributed? The unusual circumstances of our meeting, and your grace's choice of companion, would suggest to me a desire for an honest and unvarnished opinion, if you want. My advice to you is stop. Axing Uldah's wealth to save Alamegan refugees is a terrible, terrible idea. You oppose my proposition? Most emphatically. I agree with your grace that the refugees must have housing and employ employment, but what profit is there in Uldah in this arrangement? Profit? After all you have done for Garibani is displaced, I thought you were the very last person to seek the benefit from their misfortune. Forgive me, your grace, but you appear to be laboring under a misapprehension. It's a fine endeavor to support one's fellow man. I fear, however, that your stance is one born of pity. Your intent to save the refugees is, is, is to save the refugees, is it not? For all our potential, we are indolent creatures by nature. Unconditional charity is all we know, then we begin to rely upon it. Expect it. And then we must consider Uldah's own poor and downtrodden. Should they hear of you spending the nation's coin not to improve their lot, but to nurture the distant citizens of Alamigo, it is unlikely they will applaud your generosity. 
Surely it is not your grace's intention to foster new resentments, but to spread goodwill. Indeed, then any support I pledge to the refugees must promote self-sufficiency, whilst also serving the interests of the people of Uldah. Exactly so. Such an arrangement will create a far more equitable relationship while returning the Alamegans with the returning Alamegans, even as it generates the revenue required with the approval of your subjects. You've given me much to ponder, Lord Manderville. I thank you for your candor. Prophet, the thought never even crossed my mind. But standing about lamenting my naivety will do not do anyone any good. I shall consider my lesson learned and press on. Indiana, are you perchance acquainted with my with any successful merchants? If my attempts at philanthropy is obliged to reap a profit. I would see, it would seem wise to consult someone with a knack for business. Hmm. Ordinarily, I would not trust any agent of the East Aldenard Trading Company. But if you hold this Hancock fellow in high esteem, I am content to be led by you. You may repay my faith by journeying to distant Kugane and speaking with him on my behalf. Eager though I am to visit those shores, I have not the leisure for a lengthy sea voyage. Now, assuming you will travel as adventurers are wont to do, I shall await your report by the Aetherite in Uldah. Fair journey to you, Kenliana, and a swift one if you please. What if I wanted to take a boat, Nanamo? What if I didn't want to travel by Aetherite? What if I wanted to take a month-long... Kugane boat excursion and get locked in a ghost, uh, you know, like a fucking ghost graveyard to grin. What if I wanted that? Greetings, honored madam. Will you be entering the Rubu Bazaar offices? Sure will. Hey, oh, Hancock. Kinliana, to what do I owe the pleasure? Or are you here on business? I beg your pardon. Her Grace the Sultana would have my opinion on how best to invest the wealth of Uldah. My dear Kinliana, you have, I have you to thank for this recognition, I am sure. I am flattered that you came to me, truly flattered. But why settle for a lowly apprentice when you could have the master? Upon matters of profit, there is no living soul better qualified to advise Her Grace than Chairman Lolorito, a man whose morning excretions are said to fill his guard robe with guild. Exertions, not excretions. That's weird. Pretty sure it's the same thing. I'm pretty sure they're saying he shits gold. Bad phrasing. <laughs> I should be happy to arrange a meeting for you, I say. At the Scion's former headquarters in Thanalan? The Waking Sands would seem a suitably neutral venue for negotiations, don't you think? Very well, Kinliana, and may your dealings prove fruitful. Yeah, your morning exertions, your morning excretions, either way, shouldn't involve gold. <laughs> don't excrete gold. Don't exert gold. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'll look at. Look, if you're gonna hang out with me, you gotta stop jumping up and down. <laughs> what outfit is that? Oh, it's like the ancient fucking tavern from, uh, Astasha. Shit, forgot about that outfit. I forgot it came in red. Welcome back, Kinliana. Did your merchant friend have any useful advice to share? Not gonna like it. With Lola Rito? And you agreed to this? I'm well aware of his standing in the field of business, but I'd hoped to keep the monetarists at arm's length, and him in particular. Nay, I cannot live in fear of the man. I must learn how to treat with him if I am to rule Uda effectively. Very well, I will meet with Lord Lola Rito. Let us go ahead to the Waking Sands and prepare for his coming. God, it auto travels. So this is where the Scions first congregated. I have heard many tales, but never had occasion to visit. To work, then. The hour of the meeting draws near, and I would gather my thoughts. Pray see to it that we have the appointed room to ourselves. Boy, Orianje, get out. Get out of here. A 
personal summons from the science. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. <laughs> you have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. There. Would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lolorito, but shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lolorito, Share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> it would seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that uh, proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Uldar. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. Tis an elegant solution, albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identify the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Avania, and you know the land far better than I. Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? I super don't remember the answer to this. I think it's maybe the psaltery. Yeah, we'll find out. Yes, if a stable trade route can be established between Uldar and Alamigo, then Alagiri would once more become an important waypoint. But while such growth would greatly benefit its current residents, I'm afraid it could sustain little beyond. Well, then maybe Alagana. It's probably the Psaltery. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yes, a quarry nope, okay, this is the Psaltery. Rip. The potential for profit. At least it would do were it situated anywhere near a lucrative market. It would cost more to transport the materials than they are worth, in my humble opinion. Well, then, clearly, you want me to say the Psaltery. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Sel. I know the Saltry and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, 
myself included, salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of guilt. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course, but I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, Your Grace. I shall dispatch representatives well-versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ons of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment, whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders, just as your grace desired. A deal is struck. I fear it will be many years before I feel comfortable taking part in such negotiations. But I shall not complain. We have piqued Lolorito's interest and secured his invaluable expertise. Thank you, Kinliana. I could not have done this without you. Our course is decided. I shall return to the palace and have my ministers begin work on implementing the particulars of the plan. If I could prevail upon you one more time, Kinliana, I would ask that you convey the details of our negotiations to Commander Hext on your return to Alamigo. My thanks again. Together we have laid the groundwork for an endeavor which promises to benefit the peoples of Alamigo and Uldar both. Liliana, you're back. What did Nanamo? Oh, sorry. Are you allowed to talk about your audience of the Sultana? So, Rabon says he's going to return to Uldah, but she isn't sure he wants to. Huh, tell us something we don't know, but I'm pleased to hear she's committed to helping our refugees come home. And this plan to revitalize the Sultry does make a lot of sense. Quite how you convinced her to seek Lolorito's help is another question. After all that happened, he is the very last person I would expect her to turn to for advice. But, on a more practical note, Lise, assuming the interim government elects to accept Uldah's proposal, I have one caveat I should like to include in the bargain. Alamiga must be permitted to cover a portion of the investment. We have a fortune at our disposal, after all, and allowing Uldah to provide the entirety of the capital will afford Lolorito too much control. Honestly, Alfino, now it's like Kugane never happened. What exactly does a ruthless profiteer have to do to earn your trust? But, yes, you do make a fair point. First things first, though, we need to discuss this proposal with the Sultry's residents. Whiskar, how do you fancy explaining the Sultana's plan to your grandfather? I'd like to hear what Watt thinks of the idea before agreeing to anything. Right away, Commander. Would you mind coming along, Kinliana? I might need you to fill in the details. Then I shall come as well. Should Watt wish to discuss figures, my knowledge of the nation's finances may prove useful. I can't remember. Walter are closer to the other Aether, right? Uh, yes, but I'm so. If anyone else is hanging out, happy Friday. I am beyond relieved that it is Friday. <laughs> and that I do not have a raid today. So in 12 minutes, we will continue playing New Game Plus, instead of getting bullied by a vampire. And then on Sunday, we're going to get super bullied by a vampire. <laughs> hey, yo, what? What manner of mischief brings you youngins to old Watts this time, huh? 
You want to rebuild the Psaltery, Grandad? Kiliana, tell him about the deal. Well, bugger me. We never had the coin or on the... Uh, hands to put the place back to how it was, but it sounds like that's about to change. There's one small wrinkle in your plan. It doesn't account for all the nasties queuing up to eat anyone who goes near the shore. The king used to send soldiers to call the buggers, but the Imperials weren't about to help the likes of us. Don't worry, Grandad. We'll take care of all that. Commander Hex has been talking about starting up regular patrols, and I'm sure she'd assign me to the lock if I asked. I'd appreciate that, Whiskar, my lad. Truly, I would. Oh, does this mean you've gotten better with that blade of yours? I've been training I, but mostly to kill Imperials. You have some experience hunting monsters, don't you, Kenliana? Think you could cast an eye over a few of the local beasties and teach me how to deal with them? Don't waste any time, then. I'll see you by the lock. Whilst you're busy attending to the local fauna, I shall have Master Watt explain to me exactly what is required to restore, restore the Saltery to its former glory. Good hunting. Right then, Kinliana, I've got the spyglass here you can use to take a closer look at these pests. Once you've got their measure, you can tell me what to do, and we'll see how well I get on. I didn't actually say anything. No. Sure. I'm only supposed to like say something. Oh, here we go. The Yavi's entire body is protected by a hard carapace, but the underside of the head looks soft and vulnerable. Ah, looks like you found a Yavi. They say hitting their shells like smacking a rock. Any suggestions? Aim for the soft underside of his head. Vulnerable under the head, are they? Right then. Wish me luck. You did good, kid. You did good. Thanks, Kiliana. I did just as you told me, and the wave kit went down like a sack of potatoes. Let's find something else. I think I can handle the Yabbies now, so we should try something different. What else is out there? Phobad's hands are large and powerful, but destroying its crystallized core should render the salt golem inanimate. You sense power pulsating from behind its brow. Ugh, Phobad. How do I defeat one of those? Destroy the core within its brow. Is that its head, eh? I'll stab it right between the eyes, then. Deflated. <laughs> False feet. Anyone interested? I think that's. Yeah, Tall Tale. I think that's the achievement fate. 
Yeah, that's the achievement fate. Hmm. Only 16 minutes left. I don't know if two people can take it down. No, I'm just gonna fucking go in. <laughs> We're just gonna start it. <laughs> minutes, huh? You might be able to do it. Fuck, I keep forgetting I don't have... Royal authority at this level. <laughs> Sinks down a little Help there, buddy. Gonna watch us. Accuracy down. That's not a real stat. <laughs> DPS and healer. Oh fuck, I'm gonna get hit again. I'm gonna cheap in horror, that's the only reason I'm here.
Dude, you're pulling so many things. I can't help you if you're gonna do that. <laughs> God, these things fucking AoEs are so big! Can I interrupt the next one? I don't know. Nine minutes. Oh, can we do it? I don't actually know. We'll find out. I have an actual DPS. The first couple minutes, we, the first like three minutes, we didn't have a DPS, so we'll help. I shut my fucking chocobo out, what am I doing? Bunch of ads, 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 bunch of ads. <laughs>
Oh, three minutes to get 25%. I don't think we're gonna do it. <laughs> Damn it, we tried so hard. Oh no, I'm so sad. Else would that Dragoon is not tethering anyone. He's just putting it on himself. That's really sad, too. Oh, God, we need to do 10% a minute. 10% a minute, we can do it. I believe! <laughs> Oh no. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah, we're doing about 5% a minute. We're, we're going about half the speed we need to. Actually, oh, fuck, we'll see. It's going to be real fucking close. Do I pop a pot for this? Is it worth the potion? Yes, it is. I'm popping a fucking potion! not buffing someone with your eye that's so upsetting if we don't lose it it's because you didn't tether anyone I'm not we're just just ignore the ad ignore the ad dude uh, one minute for <laughs> oh, no I hate this <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we got it. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Fucking let's go. Oh, I hit the wrong enemy. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. <laughs> All that for an achievement. Oh, and a Yu Gi Oh card. Let's go. <laughs> No, I already have the card. I shouldn't have the achievement. Uh, that's okay. Slay me a mountain. Good shit. Yeah, not a lot of people run the old fates like that. All right, back to back to the story. Where was I? Oh yeah, Whiskar. That's how you fight one of those guys. <laughs> It's not easy fighting with the liberated Real Amigo, watching your every your every move. But you got the job done. Thanks for the advice, Kiliana. I feel a lot better prepared for my patrols now. Any road, we better head back to the Celtery before Granddad starts to worry. I've been snipped into pieces by and fed to a Yebby's hatchlings. See you return in one piece. Dealt with those beasties then, did you? 
I thought of myself after a bit of instruction from Kinliana here, like, once I've shared what I've learned with the others, we should have no trouble keeping the shoreline clear. Good lad, fine young man you become, Whiskar, a fine young man indeed. Too often of late I hear tales of folk over in the city, drunk on victory and hungry for revenge, their heads stuck firmly in the past. But we need to set our sights on the future, one thing which will improve our lot. Things like getting the psaltery ready to welcome our long-lost countrymen. Remember, you did good. You helped me out, but you're you're narratively in the way. You're standing on top of Elfie now. <laughs> it seems Whiskar has the psaltery security well in hand. I, meanwhile, have discussed the next steps with Master Watt and completed my inspection of the site. A little work, the vacant buildings here can be made into very presentable dwellings. Message from General Alden. Apologies for the interruption, miss, but the General would speak with you at your earliest convenience. Don't feel obligated to wait around on my account. I will remain here to hammer out the finer details with Watt and act as an intermediary with our business partners in Ulda. You should go. General Alden asks that you wait for him by the main gate in Elamegan Quarter. My apologies again, miss. Fare you well. Cat, you're sitting on my headphone wire. It's pulling. That's not good. The cat just crawled onto my lap once again from next to me. I should tech teleported, but nah. Apologies for the wait. People are screaming for the butcher's blood again. No sooner have we broken up one mob than another forms. Thankfully, all have been amenable to reason thus far. But it is no concern of yours. We must speak of the men Arenvald and his comrades apprehended in the peaks. By their uniforms, the captives were first judged to be Imperial troops. But after further investigation, their true identities came to light. I dare say you remember Yu Yuhasi and Laurentius, the fugitives who conspired with Captain Ilbert in the Crystal Braves' betrayal. Aye, well, it would seem they followed him all the way to the Wall. It was they who orchestrated the slaughter of the Resistance fighters prior to the Griffin's infernal ritual. Were it in your hands, how would you punish these men? Their lives would be forfeit. They killed Wilred and a lot of other people. Here, here. There is no more fitting sentence for the perpetrators of such a massacre, and that is but one of their crimes. In any event, I thank you for your honesty. When the time comes for the Alliance to pass judgment, I'll see that your opinion is heard. Well, that concludes our business here. But there is more I would say. Walk with me. I'm a popular gal right now. Everyone wants to walk and talk with the Warrior Light. I'm pretty cool. I bear a share of the blame for Ilbert's atrocities. Had I openly supported the cause of Alamegan liberation, he might not have felt driven to do what he did. 
things could have been different. And I'm sorry they aren't. But even after all that has happened, my homeland is free. With the Scions and the Alliance at their side, my countrymen have reclaimed what many thought lost forever. Under her new leadership, I have every confidence that Alamigo will emerge from the shadow of the Empire and rise once more to greatness. Which means my work here is done. Soon, I will return to Uldar and take my place at the Sultana's side. Father... I'll not deny there's a part of me that wants to stay. The same part that contemplated renouncing my rank and joining you as a wandering sellsword. But I pledged my blade to Nanamo, and I will not betray that oath. Is this truly what you want, Father? It is. Ever has my sword been hers to command. And ever shall it remain. Thank you for lending an ear. When all the rest are clamoring for me to stay, I trust you'll send me on my way. That took longer than I intended, but at least you know where I stand. Now that's settled. Arnvold, what news? We may have a problem, sir. A group of Ananta has arrived at the main gates, and I don't mean the Vera. These are Kaliana, the ones who summoned the Primal. They're insisting they be allowed to attend the Council. Lisa's trying to reason with them, but she may need help. Hmm. An invitation was extended to all the native beast tribes, but we assumed the Kaliana would refuse it out of hand. We'd best go see for ourselves. Pippin, take command of our forces and be ready for battle. Kenliana, you've dealt with these Kaliana before. I'd have you at my side. One of the funnest duties of Stormblood. Honestly, in general, I just very much like the idea of this duty we're about to go into. Very cool. Very neat. Uh, when it, uh, First came out, not like anything they've done before. Niana, Raubon! God, it's good to see you. Ah, the Slayer has come. We have not forgotten how you sinned against the Lady of Bliss. We did not come here to shed blood. You claim to seek harmony with all who call Girabanya home. If this is truly your wish, you will welcome us as envoys of the Ananta. It is our wish, and you are welcome, but we cannot condone the summoning of primals. If you want to enter the palace, I must ask that you first surrender any crystal jewelry. You have my word that it will be returned to you when the meeting is over. We will do as you ask, but you will not have our weapons. We are not so foolish as to place ourselves entirely at the mercy of our tormentors. I reckon that's the closest we're going to get to a compromise, and we will have people standing guard. Bye. let them keep their swords. Then we have an agreement. Lead the way to your meeting chamber. Why do I have a feeling we've welcomed a viper into our midst? Raban, while you're not wrong, that's probably racist. <laughs> Kaliana's elders' intentions seem at odds with all we know of her tribe. What do you think, Kimliana? The enthralled cannot be trusted. They are tempered by a primal. <laughs> I said that once a creature has fallen under the sway of a primal, there is no salvation. I strongly doubt the Kalyana have suddenly broken free of Lakshmi's will. 
Whatever the truth, I would take no chances. The guard must be strengthened, ideally with people who know a thing or two about primals. Can we rely on the Scions? I'll round up our comrades and send them here to Alamegan Quarter. You can go ahead if you like, Kiliana. My thanks. I will see you in the palace. Go get him, Arnvald. Go get him. Excuse me. Emiana, I brought reinforcements. Arnvald told us of the arrival of your unexpected guests, and I agree that it would be prudent to call upon Yashtola and Thancred as well. One can never be too careful when dealing with the enthralled. I'm not too familiar with the Kaliana tribe myself, but Alize's report suggested that they had shunned contact with other races. Advised it, in fact, even compared to other Ananta. Indeed, this apparent reversal of attitude is most curious. No one expected a response to our invitation, much less an envoy. I imagine Lise was forced to make some rather hasty arrangements in order to accommodate them. Speaking of which, how should we deploy ourselves? This meeting is to be held in the throne room, it would seem wise to have eyes both inside and outside the palace. Stola and I can stand guard without. That leaves the three of you to keep watch over the proceedings in the throne room itself. Understood. We shall join General Alden inside, then. Emiana, do you know the rear entrance to the palace? It's on the eastern edge of the city, at the top of the stairs. The guard there should have been instructed to let us pass. Notification on my phone. Hmm. All right. You're with the Scions, miss. General Alden left orders that you were to be escorted inside. You'll follow me. Refugee leaders, envoys from the Ananta and the Kikern. You've come from every corner of Girabania to help decide the future of Alamigo. But before that, I want to ask you a question. What was the first thing you noticed when you came in? For me, it was that empty throne. It has no one to sit on it now. No Viceroy, no King. Would any of you like to take their place? Or should someone else sit there? Then let's sit here in a circle, as equals, and I hope, as friends. Look at least be mag and shit. Hey, 
expertly done. Lise has removed monarchy as a choice early in the game and positioned them to consider a joint government. All things considered, I would say events have got off to a fine start. And that is Alagana's stance on the matter. Thank you, Regenfurt. Another vote in favor. Next, let's hear from Shanti of the Kalyana. Tell us, how do your people feel about the idea of a republic? Ianantha, wish only that those who dwell within Gia Abania devote themselves to our You shall all worship Sri Lakshmi! Lady of Bliss, grace us once more with your beauteous visage! No crystals were allowed through the door. We can worry about the how of it later. We need to evacuate these people right now, or the primal will make thralls of them all. It's up to us. Damn it! The guards were already turned! Fools! No, you don't! The Kaliana would see us all enthralled. Then they're going to be sorely disappointed. We have the Warrior of Light and Arenvold to shield us. Defend your guests and attack the primal, can they? We're stuck on the back foot. Uh, all right, I think I have an idea. Keep these people safe, General. I'll be back as soon as I can. You'd best make it quick. Come then. Who will be next to die on my steel? Yeah, this was a very cool duty. Like, I, it's the first time that they're like, all right, we're just going to bring back a primal that you've already fought and not in a party context. You're going to do a duty against it. It's like they brought back primals before you do quests where you fight Titan again, but they normally have to like queue into it and fight Titan again. I'm pretty sure this is the first instanced primal. How do we fight her without leaving our allies wide open? We can't stay on the back foot forever. No, damn it, if we think like that, we've already lost. I have the Warrior of Light at my side, but we can do this. Isn't that right, Kinliana? And this is the first time they show off that we can shield people from primal influence. Leaders of Garibania, accept my love. Worship my light. It means to enthrall everyone. We have to stop her. Gotta find.
fine job of blocking our retreat. Not your mortal body's tire. Far better to dwell in a dream. Keep our eyes open, thanks very much. Or involved, you'll let this whole side go. My dude, my bro. Too many, we can't stop them all. Number two, I like this duty. Cause this part. I just think she's neat. Damn it all. It's only a matter of time before we miss one. Ordola is a neat character. Why do you deny my blessing? You who defy me shall rest in death. They brought you into this world over a mistake I made. I'll be damned if I let it let you taunt me with it. You go. Stay on your guard. Cannot flee my radiance. You will all be my dreamers. We'll lock her down as best we can. The rest of you need to run. Quickly now, while the primal is. Please? I can't. I can't run from this. They need us. We stay and fight together. Alfino, the Allen boys are in your care. Surely you do not mean to. Very well. I shall see our guests to safety. I missed my button. Why are you two staying? Still has more than enough strength to idle you both. You need more than three to best a primal, and if we let you fall here, then who will be left to stop her? At least, we don't need more than three to stop a primal. I've killed a primal on my own, like, many times. Oh, my spell casting. Why can't I move? She's going after Lee and Raubon.
Thanks, Kenliana. I'll make sure my steel is worth the effort. Again, you refuse my gift. Coming up on something big. Come close to me, all of you. Nice work, Fordola. Are you alright, though? <sighs> this. This is nothing. Ugh. It's one thing after another. We have to fight as one. Oh, at least you're coming right up. Yup. <laughs> She's just charging right in. Technically, I could have stayed in. That makes sense. Oh, I'm gonna eat shit. Yup. <laughs> Why do you cling to your misery? She's starting to weaken. Don't give up. Behold my divine brilliance, Chimichanga! What in the? Her power's out of control. I'll shield us, but you have to finish her off. Quickly, I can't hold her off forever. Kill her! You need to kill her now! Here Hold on, Ferdola. We'll end this now. For El Amigo! Stop feeling so hard, and maybe I wouldn't see your goddamn past every two seconds. I'm only going to say this once. The Ananta just summoned their primal in the throne room. My friends are fighting her, but they need help. They need someone with the Echo, and by the gods, I wish I had it, but I don't. I told you before that you still had time, but things have changed. I need your answer now. You can end it like Xenos, or you can fight for Alamigo. Your choice.
seven hells. It's her, the butcher. It's done. Take me back to my cell. You are not forgiven. Not you. You I will never forgive. Standing against a primal and saving us from servitude. You have my thanks. Day for Dola's heart. Six sizes that day. Well fought, Kinliana, Arnvald. That was near thing. Why, our stand against the Kalyana would have been brief indeed had you not volunteered for guard duty. We'd be enthralled as surely as our sentries were. They must have planned this far in advance. Security was my responsibility, and I know how dangerous primals can be. I should have... Gah, it's my fault. My stupid mistake. Nay, lass. We were all caught unawares. We will take this as a lesson, and watch our own more carefully in the future. You can be sure that the lackeys who smuggled the crystals into the throne room weren't the only thralls in our ranks. The soldiers who first spoke up in favor of the Kalyana keeping their weapons springs to mind. Primal Servant is betrayed by his aura. If you mean to conduct an investigation, I can identify any others acting under Sri Lakshmi's influence. Thanks, Shishtola. We'd appreciate the help. Speaking of help, I almost fell over when Fordola turned up. What was she even doing there? I asked her to come. Oh, well, that explains it then. It's sad, but Dragonford was right. Her victims will never forgive her for what she's done. But I don't think Fredola picked up the sword looking for forgiveness. She just wanted to fight for her country. If you say the world, if you say the world in which Fredola grew up in is partly to blame for what she became, then as an Alamegan, I feel responsible for improving that world. We cannot ignore what's happening right now. We have to show people a better way than vengeance, or we risk giving birth to a new generation of skulls. I know it's idealistic, but I want to help the people to let go of their old grievances and make peace with each other. And I'll hold a thousand meetings and talk to them blue in the face, if that's what it takes. There's a long and arduous path you have chosen, but one well worth taking. Rest assured that I will do what I can to help you reach your destination. Thank you, Alfino. The first step will be to get our representatives back in the throne room. They're a little shaken, but none of them seemed ready to run. We're all determined to finish what we started. I will see that you're not interrupted. Kinliana, you and the Scions are to stand down. Get some rest, you've earned it. Spot to contemplate the heavens. Yeah, I fought a primal here. Imzino slit his throat here. It was all very fun. The meeting is over. The envoys have chosen to instate a government modeled on Ishkard's House of Commons, a ruling body of representatives elected by the people. The 
is a fair decision, and one which signals the end of my part in all this. That I would gaze upon Girabania's stars one last time before I leave. Don't tell him, Nanamo. Tell that man what's up. Forget something. Your Grace, I... There was no word. Rabon Aldin, you are hereby dismissed as General of the Immortal Flames and relieved of your seat on the Syndicate. Your Grace. Rabon, I am no longer a child. Stay here in your homeland. Work with your brethren. Rebuild Alamigo. Your desire to stand alone. I, I understand, but remember what happened. I remember full well the consequences of my naivety. And thus did I consult at length with the most trusted advisor ere I embarked upon this course. A most trusted advisor? And what of me? Am I no longer deserving of your confidence? What trust can there be between us when you withhold the truth from me? Did you think me oblivious to the anguish in your eyes when you spoke of returning to Uldar? For years and years, we have trusted one another. Yet now you refuse to confess your heart's desire. I swore an oath to you that day on the sands. I pledged my sword. And it has served me well. But in Pippin you have forged a new sword, as sharp and deadly as the blade you bequeathed him. I will show you a Sultana who can wield every weapon at her disposal, including Lollorito and his monetarist cronies. So follow your heart, please. You are home. You are free. Smile for me, Rabon. I would have this parting be a joyous one. Thank you, Your Grace. It has been an honor to serve you and Uldar. Tomorrow you will serve Alamigo and fight for the good of all Eorzea. Am I understood? Yes, Your Grace. such a cute duo <laughs> thanks for shielding us from Lakshmi you two if you hadn't been there, the rest of us would be worshipping her by now. You're kind to include me, Lise. But we both know who did most of the work. 
I could scarce keep track of the battle, let alone land at Elimblo. No shame in admitting it. The Warrior of Light has put far better men than me in the shade. <clears throat> Did I mention that I encountered the Sultana in the palace? It would seem her grace has come to Girabania to oversee the final stages of her relocation project. She was in search of General Oldin, and I directed her to the rooftop garden. I do hope you are still there. Are you in the habit of gossiping about the affairs of royalty, Master Leveilleur? Certainly not, Your Grace. I, I was merely informing my companions. Pities, Alphano, it was only a jest. I must yield the floor to Raubal. He has an important announcement to make. <clears throat> As of yesternight, I have been relieved of my post in the Immortal Flames and the Syndicate both. I shall be assuming my father's duties. And may I say that Tizona has never felt heavier upon my back. Twould seem I am in need of employment. Mayhap one of my old acquaintances can introduce me to a mercenary company of some such. You may be getting on in years, father, but you'd struggle to find a band of sellswords who wouldn't snap your hand off. Your remaining hand. <laughs> yes, the bull of Alamigo need not be put out to pasture just yet. <laughs> your grace has developed a wicked edge to her humor, and you, Pippin, would do well not to laugh when the future may hold the same for you. this mean you're staying? Aye. That seems to be the way of it. I would be glad to aid you in rebuilding our nation, if you'll have me. If, he says. Welcome home, Raoban. That was unexpected, though you seem distinctly unsurprised. Who, me? Either you are more astute than I give you credit for, or I'm losing my touch. In any event, one thing is certain. Alamigo will rejoice at the homecoming of her dearest son. I think it's about time I headed back to Ralgar's Reach. What's next for all of you? Alize will be eager to hear of recent events, so I shall join you, if you've no objections. I'd welcome the company. Ileana, why don't you come along to the Reach as well, once you said your farewells to Nana and the others? Upon completion of this quest, you can go up to the Royal Menagerie whenever you want! Wow!
I'd done enough random hunts that I was kind of curious, uh, any Centurio seals I had. Them. Alright, okay, let's forget the plan like logs. Yeah, I need to farm Centurio seals sometime. Some of the little cute bits and bobs that are hunt specific. I've got job leveling that I can do that with. Well, here we are again. Alfino has regaled me with a thrilling tale of hidden treasure troves, mid-meeting betrayals, unlikely alliances, and joyous homecomings. But see, my miss, everything. I was patrolling the palace grounds when Thancred and Yastola, when we heard the report of the primal in the throne room. I honestly doubted my own ears. As others have said, we were lucky to have our Echo Blast champions nearby this time, but we'll need to keep a closer eye on the Kalyana. Say that again. This whole episode has reminded me of just how far apart our kinds are. It's like centuries of fear and mistrust really can't be washed away in a day, but someone has to make an effort at reconciliation if these conflicts are ever going to end. Naturally, a lot of people are crying out for vengeance, vengeance, but I've been doing my best to calm things down. Violent reprisals will only lead to more summonings. Indeed, violence will ever beget violence, as the Empire has learned to its cost in recent times. In any case, summoning Lakshmi was the broodmother's doing, and whoever replaces her might not be so keen on the idea. Just have to wait and watch. Which isn't to say that we won't be putting the safety of our allies in the Vera and the M-Tribes first. I plan to have the Resistance Scouts keep track on the Kalyana's movements at all times. My parents will be relieved to hear that. What are your plans for the rest of the Resistance Army out of interest? Are we to prepare for Imperial counterattacks? That would be a question for the Resistance's newest recruit, a military commander with far more experience than me. What, the Bull of Alamigo? We call it an army, but the Resistance is really a collection of smaller independent groups. When Conrad passed his command on to me, that authority only extended to the Freedom Fighters based in Ralgar's Reach. He just so happened to be serving as the Resistance spokesman at the time and needed someone to take over the role while everything was in disarray, but that time has passed. When I speak with the other leaders about reforming the army under the new government, I'll be nominating Raubon as the overall commander of our forces. He has more experience than the rest of us put together, and we stand to learn a lot from him. Indeed. He is in all respects the ideal choice. Assuming he accepts the post, Alamigo will have added a formidable weapon to its arsenal. And given the progress of Nanamo's resettlement initiative, I see great cause for hope. The seeds which so carefully we so carefully sowed have begun to quicken, my friends. I like that. We tend to our promises and watch as Alamigo blooms. I do give thanks to the Kami that my makeshift raft withstood the fury of the seas. But then, there their generosity ended. Without coins in our pockets for new attire, we are doomed to look like so much jetsam. Oh, woe betide the poor man in a city of rich merchants. These dango are delicious. Will you have one? Hmm? More sweetbreads? I surrender my blade to secure what few coins we have. Bah, it is like talking to a child. Why fate saddled me with this burden, I shall never know. But I am alive, and I must return to my master's side. Come, Suyu. We shall find a ship to carry us across the Ruby Sea.
Meanwhile, in the Fortress of Dune, Imperial Palace. You read the reports? First Doma, then El Amigo. Lord Xenos, put to the sword! Don't believe everything you read. I hear the Viceroy was merely wounded, and that he has already returned to the capital. Naturally, the savages beat their chest and boast loudly of taking his head regardless. Nay, Lord Xenos lives? Deplorable that our own officers should be fooled by Eorzean misinformation. All wonder the provinces have begun rising up in rebellion. We must prepare an official and above all accurate announcement to quell these perniculous rumors. They would wage war on empty words. Let them produce the Viceroy's remains then. We shall soon put the lie to their claims. I will be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. Then we continue. All right, I'm just gonna order some dinner. And I think that was the end of 4.1. I'm pretty sure they didn't start naming. I thought they named the last quest of the patch after the patch name, but the Return of the Bull, Return of the Bull was never a patch name, I don't think. I don't think. Order some poke for dinner, because I've got fish cravings. A weirdo. Beep, 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 beep. Oh no, they're closed. The other one closed, even though they make me sad. 
They're not closed. Hmm. Oh, but you don't have salmon anymore, do you? Yeah, what is a poke place without salmon? Well, fuck. Maybe I'll order sushi. <laughs> get some ramen. I could do some. Let's do. No, they're not open either. Oh my god, it's Friday. What are you doing? I'm sad. Oh shit. Guess I'm getting this instead. No fish for me. Food ordered. Got an hour before that shows up, and then I'll keep playing even after it shows up anyway. It's now oh, it's 7.40. Time flies when you're having a good time. But now, tidings from the east. Kenyana, great timing. I'm just about to send word to the Scions. I've got lots to tell you. The Council has officially recognized the resistance of our standing army, and I expect you can guess who's been appointed commander. I to say, we're in a good hand, in good hand. Having the Bull of Alamigo at the helms done wonders for morale. People were dancing in the streets when the announcement was made, and we have you and the Sultana to thank for it. If you two hadn't worked your magic, he'd have never contemplated following his heart. Council has also decreed that we're to maintain a presence at Rogger's Reach. Elise will continue to lead our forces in the fringes, a job she's been doing tirelessly. A bit too tirelessly, some might say. We're constantly having to remind her to rest before she falls over. That's an exaggeration. I always get up again. Anyway, we can hardly afford to lower our guard now, not after our latest blunt brush with Lakshmi. Speaking of which, we've been keeping a close eye on the Kalyana, and it looks like they've chosen a new leader. It's, um, Chandi's daughter. You know, the half-dead one. For whatever reason, the Kalyana thought she was the best candidate, which makes them leaderlessly, leaderless, basically. As things stands, there's no prospect of engaging in talks, let alone coming to an understanding. But I won't let that stop me. I'll keep on reaching out to them until they finally see sense. Just like I've been reaching out to Fordola. She still won't meet my gaze, but she's given up on trying to ignore me. May only be the odd grunt, but at least she's responding. I'll get through to her yet. Liliana, there you are. Alfino, Alize, is everything all right? We've received word from Tataru. Hancock has apparently acquired information of great inf interest and urgency. More than that, she didn't say. Only that we should come to Kagane right away. I had a mind for the two of us to set forth together, but Alize is determined to make it a party of three. As I've told you more than a dozen times, brother, my wounds are quite healed, and I would benefit from some fresh air. Besides, you may well need an extra pair of hands. Worry not, sister. I have quite given up trying to convince you. Whether we be two or three, we should depart as soon as possible. You will be joining us, I trust. Huh. I was about to say I'd come too, but I'll just have to settle for cheering you on from afar. Good luck with whatever it turns out to be. Thank you, Least. Rest assured, should the business prove to be of even ten ten genital concern to Alamigo, we shall inform you without delay. Let's be off, then. 
Hancock and Tataru await us at the Ruby Bazaar offices. At least isn't a Scion anymore. So yeah, this definitely has to be 4.2, considering that we just had a conversation about Raubon becoming commander, and now he is commander. That's usually a sign that a vague skip of time happened. Friends, thank you for coming at such short notice. We were told the matter was urgent. I take it Yuguri and Sorobin are also involved? Ah, my presence here is but a happy coincidence. I am come on separate business, which can wait. My apologies. Master Hancock, pray. Tell our friends exactly what you told me. Of course, of course. Some few days ago, a large detachment of soldiers was seen arriving at the Garlean Embassy. This seemed to me most unusual, as no personages of note are due to visit for a matter of months. So, I made a few inquiries, whereupon I learned of a most curious rumor. Apparently, the soldiers were dispatched to Kugani to investigate recent sightings of a certain individual. The late acting Imperial Viceroy of Doma, Yotsuyu. I beg your pardon? I too am loath to believe it. I saw the keep come down on top of her. We all did. I would not presume to question your eyewitness accounts, nor am I one to take rumors at face value. The fact is, the Garleans have no knowledge of what took place at Dorma Castle. They may well be chasing after a woman who merely resembles Yotsuyu. But a woman who resembles Yotsuyu in the company of a grizzled Rogadan samurai? I dare say that thickens the plot. Gosetsu! He's alive! While I have no conclusive proof, I thought that such a possibility warranted your attention. Have you informed Lord Hien? Well, I think we'd all like to believe the old bear survived. Indeed. While I dare not give myself wholly to hope, I will not deny that I have prayed for such a miracle ever since that fateful day. But regardless of my personal feelings, if the Empire has seen fit to pursue these rumors so vigorously, we can scarce afford to ignore them. I am bound by duty to ascertain the truth of the matter. Will you join me in this quest? I am not sure what I'd do if I saw Yatsuyu again. I understand. Only too well. But if Gosetsu yet lives, he will need our help if he is to avoid capture. Gosetsu is a dear friend, and we cannot abandon him to the mercy of the Empire. Our course is clear. Hancock, is there aught else you can tell us? Alas, not. But... I have taken the liberty of employing one of the finest informants money can buy. You shall have the latest intelligence on the Garlean's movements and more besides. The informant awaits your pleasure in the back streets of Sanjo Hanamachi. From its shining facade to its dark underbelly, you know Kugane as intimately as he. One of our finest informants money can buy. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Permit me to assist you in your quest, my friends. 
The sooner your business is concluded, the sooner we may speak of mine. Should your search take you away from Kugane, my boat is at your disposal. I shall see that she is ready to sail. Look at Sorob on a hand. If he's providing us a ship, the least we can do is supply the provisions. We'll be at the pier if you need us. I welcome a welcome offer and an excellent plan. Without further ado, then, let us seek out this informant in Sanjo Hanamachi. Why do you have a bad feeling about this indeed, Alize? For the same reason, this is bad. Nope, I super can't. Uh, wait, no. Yep, up this way. This should be the place. Now we wait and see who comes. It, it, it has been a while, my friends. Yes, yes, a long while indeed. Oh, I knew it. Yodo, any funny business and you know what will happen, I trust. No, no, no funny business. Only loyal service to the finest quality information. Uh, of course, such quality does not come cheap. No, but then Hancock already paid you. Honestly, you must think we were born yesterday. I have half a mind to call a lease. No, no, no lease, I beg you. No boots. I will tell you everything I know, free of charge. The Empire searches for Yahtzee, high and low, far and wide. Come to enlist my help, they did, promising rich rewards for dec decisive information. And have you decisive information? Were the two individuals cited here, indeed, Gosetsu and Yatsuyu? Alas, see them with my own eyes, I did not. But the Imperials are confident. Yes, yes, very confident indeed. Look at the size of their contingent. But here's something they do not know. A rumor which you will find most interesting, I think. They say an elderly Rogadin samurai appeared on Kugane Dori with a beauteous maiden and sold his katana to a pawnbroker. There's no common katana either, but one of surpassing craftsmanship. Well, that is interesting, assuming it's true. Did you corroborate the rumor with the pawnbroker in question? Yeah, uh, no. Re regrettably, I do not have a working relationship with the master of Shofuku... Shichiten. Shichichen. Shichiten. Now, why would that be, I wonder? If I didn't know better, I'd think he'd lent you money. Yeah, yeah he will help you, I'm certain. While you speak with him, I will make contact with my guardian connections and learn what I can of their progress. A glimpse of the blade is all I need to be sure, but it is wise to let the Namazu out of our is it wise to let the Namazu out of our sight? No, you you will betray us. No no, no more betrayals, no more boots. To divide our forces is simply more efficient. He's right. Given the urgency, we would do well to split up. And so I will go with our friend here. Nothing improves efficiency like a little supervision. You, but, yeah, uh, yes, 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 we will go together, and there will be no boots. Let us be about it, then. Good luck with the katana. Shall we reconvene at the pier later on? Fragrant as the Ruby's Bazaar offices are, I prefer fresh air. I believe Alize has her task well in hand. Shall we seek out the pawnbroker? I feel like part three will probably go to probably the next patch after this one, if I remember where things leave off. And then the last part four will be the last two patches, especially if it's like last time. Everything in order, then let us proceed to Kagane Dori and find the master of Shof Shofuku Shichiten. Shichiten. Say that ten times fast.
do believe it's not at the end. Welcome, good madam. Welcome. Will you be buying or? Ah, so you've heard tale of the Rogue of the Samurai's Katana. Small wonder, it's a fine example of its kind. One moment. There, I hope you have found our pawnbroker. Excellent work, Kinliana. And that is the katana. There can be no doubt, it is Gosetsu's blade. Craftsmanship is exquisite, is it not? And you'll be pleased to know that the pledge has just expired. I should be glad to sell it to you, assuming you have the coin. This is no ordinary weapon, you understand, and it is priced accordingly. But if you are serious, I suggest you act quickly, as several noted collectors have already expressed an interest. Hmm. The blade represents conclusive proof, proof of Gosetsu's survival. I suppose this could be considered a necessary cost in securing a safe return. Yet, it is not a decision I can make alone, least of all when our nation has scarce begun to rebuild. Plenty of the coin. Kind of rich. Nay, my friend. Grateful though I am of the offer, I cannot ask this of you. It is enough to know that Gosetsu is alive and well. Nugiri, wait. The Scions will buy the katana. Pray consider it a gift. M Master Elfino, your kindness is touching, truly. Yet in matters of coin, would Mistress Tataru not expect to be consulted? Come now. Our friend would never have relinquished his blade where the need not great. And are we not bound by honor to help a friend in need? I say we are, and I am sure Tataru would wholeheartedly agree. It's settled then. You made a wide choice, my friend. Such pieces are few and far between. Now, if you would be so good as to come this way, I shall prepare the necessary papers. I may ask, sir, after he visited your establishment, do you perchance know where the old samurai went? He's a friend of ours, and we would return his weapon to him. A friend of yours, you say? I see. Well, then, I suppose there could be no harm in, te harm in telling you. No sooner had I provided him with the requested sum that his pretty young companion began clamoring for Dango. I duly recommended that they, those served at Umineko Tea House, and thither did they set, thither did they set off. Clamoring for Dango? Can these truly be the same people? It makes no sense. Some men are of code, perhaps, but it avails us not to speculate. Let us go to the tea house and see if we can pick up their trail. Oh, Alfino, you just got yourself into a world of hurt. Tatu's going to beat your ass. Those people have white maids leveled up. Like a res. I'm tempted to ask them if I can get a res to end up up there. Trying to get that sightseeing point for years. I never see people up there. The 
bark. Damn. <laughs> but of course I remember. How could I forget a pair like that? The most beautiful girl you'll ever see, scoffing now Dango as if her life depended on it. While the old samurai looked on, not quite what he expected, I'll wager. Far be it for me to gossip about my customers, but he was planning to spirit her acro away across the Ruby Sea, out of reach of her family, no doubt. When the girl had finally had her fill, they set off in the direction of the Sh Sh Shiokaze Hostelry. Fucking god, I can't speak these words. Presumably to find some dis someone discreet with a boat. The Kosetsu makes for Doma. But this woman who travels with him, the more I hear about her, the more I wonder if she could truly be Yatsuyu. While doubts remain of the identity of Gosetsu's traveling companion, for now we can but follow the trail. Come, let us away to the pier and make ready to set sail. Good luck, Alize will already have joined Master Sorobon and Mistress Sataru there. Goodbye, sightseeing point. We either don't have a healer, didn't see chat, or don't care. All of those above are fair. <laughs> Jiho Kaze Hostelry. Oh man. Stormblood names, names are a lot. Your name Tenzin. Your name is Tenzin. Oh, I'm not allowed to talk to Tenzin. <laughs> uh, the primal or the the trial quests from this expansion involve a man named Tenzin. Excellent timing, my friends. Mr. Salize arrived mere moments ago. All went well on my end. Gyoto met with an Imperial officer and wheedled his way to some new information. It seems the troops who recently arrived at Kagane came directly from Garlemald. The Imperial's base there had been kept in the dark. And that's not all. The contingents of the aforementioned troops are preparing for deployment to the Ruby Sea. If I didn't know better, I'd say they'd picked up on Gosetsu's trail. And your information matches ours. We are quite certain that Gosetsu seeks to cross to the mainland. I'm sorry, did I hear that right? You used Scion funds to buy Gosetsu's katana at the asking price? Aye, well, there was. we were in some haste, and it seemed a worthwhile gesture. Speaking of which, here's the contract of sale. Pray see the man is paid. That's Saul's beard. You agreed to this? Give me strength. Oh, well, it's not like the search can wait. You'd best be on your way. But Alfie, no, we need to talk. If you want to come straight to the offices as soon as you get back, promise me. Oh, very well. I shall call upon you as soon as I return. First, let us go to the Ruby Price. If Gosetsu has already set sail, the sentries there are sure to have seen him. Alfino, you better not come back. Tatri's gonna beat your ass. Oh, I forgot this was a duty. Tatri seemed rather vexed, did she not? Even the melodram ever the melodra melodramatist. I'm sure our finances can tr stretch to a single sword. Remind me to explain the value of such gestures when next we see her. Ah, but I digress. We have work to do. Oh, Alfino, you spoiled rich kid. <laughs> Eleven year twins are fucking loaded. <laughs> right. I suggest we begin by learning what we can from the sentries. What's going on out there? Travelers, are you? You may wish to postpone your plans. The Garleans have launched an attack on the Confederacy. We have no reason to believe they'll turn their attention here. But for your own safety, I suggest you return to Kugane.
Bringing out the big boys. The Garleans bear no love for the Confederacy. But with Doma lost to them, why would they attack? Unless... Unless Yotsuyu is on that island. Even if she isn't, our allies are under attack and they need our help. We will help them while you remain with Soroban. Arguing will only delay us. Is that clear? Fine, but you haven't heard the last of this. Soroban, we may need to make a swift exit. See that the boat is ready to sail at a moment's notice. It shall be done. What, and you're going to swim there, are you? It is the quickest way, and you may rest assured I've been practicing. Yeah! Belly flop. <laughs> Oh, Alfino, you, know, you precious boy. Barely knows how to swim and yet goes across the ocean. <laughs> well, I did it! No time to rest, Master Alfino. Our allies are sorely pressed. Now look who it is. I won't say no to the help, but I'm best not pleased that we need it. Here for the old man, yes? He's at the top. You'd best hurry. We're here to rescue you. Please, come with us. Stay back, Tsuyu. <coughs> Are you all right? Is he all right? Gozetsu! Damn it, we took too long. Change of plan, eliminate hostiles! All forces, attack! That's not the man that I wanted to attack. Come, let us even the odds. Reinforcements. I need reinforcements. But they should still have Magitek armor in reserves. Steal yourselves.
Ugh, we have no time for this. Damn it, reinforcements. I need more reinforcements. Watch out. He means to blow it up. Dealing with the centurion is maybe really questionable. Look, guys, you really need to like help me with this fucker. Oh, that guy's chunky, that's why. Okay. There's no way that he's still fucking rocking, but he is. He's the boss. Stop running swine, you forced my hand. Deploy the hexadrone. I care, we know not what we face. Mist and shade, take form and go forth. There are too many. Draw them to me. I shall finish this. Alright, brace yourself. Stars above, rain destruction on my enemies. Nice LB2, Alfino, you did it. Food is on the doorstep. Good timing. Setsu, thank the heavens. <laughs> Yugiri, my friends, the Kami were kind to guide your steps this way. It's over. The Imperials are retreating. I suppose we have you to thank for that. But they would never have come here were it not for her. I had a bad feeling the moment your samurai friend arrived with that woman in tow. Do not be afraid, Suyu. These people are my friends. Friends?
Forgive me, but at the risk of souring the mood, I believe you owe us an explanation. You may start by telling us what happened at Doma Castle. Of course. I'll not begrudge you that. As you know, we were trapped inside the keep when it collapsed. But even as the roof crumbled above us, so too did the floor below. We were swept out into the one river, where we would surely have drowned had a stout wooden door not chanced to float by, offering us a raft of sorts. Exhausted, we drifted out to sea at the mercy of the tides, which saw fit to dispense us on a desert island. She was with you the entire time. Aye. T'was her kimono which saved her from Hian's blade, believe it or not. Some guardian witchcraft in the weave. But it offered precious little protection against the fall. Though she survived, she awoke bereft of all her memories, and speaking like a child. A trick, surely. That was my first thought, I. And I contemplated cutting her down and being done with it. Contemplated it long and hard. Yet the Kami saw fit to deliver us from certain death. T'was their will that we survive, both of us, together. And together we shall go before our master. He shall be the one to judge. Judge what? She's your prisoner, old man. Do with her as you will. Call her Tsuyu, or whatever else tickles your fancy. T'was a name given out of necessity whilst on the road. Nothing more. As you say. But remember this. Our people suffered much at that woman's hands. When the time comes, I trust you won't let emotion blind you to what needs to be done. my word well I must be going I have an unholy mess to clean up you should be on your way too before the Imperials decide to take another tilt oh and we'll overlook the tithe this once you're welcome Yeah, we won't make you pay us. Just get her the fuck out of here. As Tansui says, we should move on. It would not do for Yatsu to be seen here. Now, if I know my sister, she will already be waiting with the boat at the nearby pier. Let's go and see if I'm right. of Centurio seals. Hey, look. Uh, level six. 60. Did it miss? It did miss. Like, why is my buff not here? Hello? Oh, I hit the wrong button. That's okay. One more blowfish. Why you miss? Storm's Eye, why you have to miss?
My mom just came and stole a whole piece of garlic bread from me. <laughs> Kosetsu, thank the gods you're safe. It was all I could do to watch the battle from afar. It was all I could do to restrain her. Can you blame me for worrying? Strong as Kinliana is, anything could happen in the chaos. But enough about me. We need to talk about her. Oh, I've been reading lines out loud, and I was muted the whole time. That's sad. Uh, the TLDR is Alize says that she's gonna watch Suyu, and uh, Suyu's like, I'm scared, and Kosetsu's like, no be scared, and everyone's like, this is awkward. She was a tyrant. R right. Past time we set sail, I for one would not keep Lord Hien waiting without due cause. Aye, and the longer we tarry, the more we risk inviting trouble, lest you forget the Red Kojin bear no love for Yatsuyu either. They shall deliver you to familiar shores, near Isari, but out of the villager's sight. Yeah, my mom came and stole a whole piece of garlic bread from me. That's why I was muted. And to be like, wow, a whole piece. Here is where we part ways, my friends. I pray the remainder of your journey passes uneventfully. Kinliana, when you are not otherwise occupied, I would speak with you about my next business venture. No, Soraba. It promises to be extremely lucrative, and I do not say so lightly. After the prodigious sum spent acquiring a certain sword, it would present a fine opportunity to refill the Scion's coffers and restore the smile to Mistress Tataru's face. Oh, come along. Tataru was overreacting. How much could a single katana possibly cost? Far more than you think, plainly. A blade like Gosetsu's is worth a fortune, enough to buy a house and furnish it. Which, you would know if you'd bothered to check the price. What? I, I, I had no idea. Th th this business venture of Sorbonne's, you will give it a fair hearing, I trust. He has been good to us, after all. As for me, I I think I shall look into drawing up upon my personal, personal funds. Bond poofs away because I already have access to Hell's Lid. We must meet with Lord Hien as soon as possible, though mayhap not at the Enclave. I will send word requesting that he receive us at the House of the Fierce, where there are fewer prying eyes. If all are in agreement, I shall scout ahead and see that the way is clear. Pray follow as swiftly as you are able, and join me on the outskirts of Namai. Come to you. Lots of people are going to act like they hate you, and that's because they all do. You were a terrible person. Okay, got to you. I personally think that you are a nice lady. You're a terrible person, but a nice lady. All is well. Good. The others are hiding nearby. Let us proceed quietly. No, you. My lord here. I am returned. Save your tears for the morrow, for we who yet walk the path 
should not think too much on the destination. When the hour arrives, we shall welcome what comes with open arms. And welcome it you did, even as the keep fell down around us. At that moment, in your smile, I spied a shred of hope, one which I have clung to ever since. Gosetsu, full glad am I to see you alive and well. We have played this scene before, have we not? Though this time our roles are reversed. That they are. Meaning you know how I feel. Wholly at a loss for words. Welcome back, old friend. Now then. Though we rejoice at your return, it seems you have brought with you certain complications. Rise, my friend. Tell me everything. Empire is bold indeed to send a token force to engage the Confederacy. As acting Viceroy, Yotsuyu would have been privy to Imperial secrets. The Galleons will not soon give up the chase. Nay, it will end with her capture or her death. Are you a friend too? She claims to have lost her memory, though I know not if she speaks true. I brought her here that you might decide her fate. Lost her memory, you say? Regardless, the people have not forgotten. Her face yet haunts their dreams. She cannot roam free. We will hold her here for a time. Place her in Jufia's care, with the express instruction that she is not to be seen. Yes, my lord. Come. No, I don't want to. It's all right, Soyu. I will come with you. Be a good girl and listen to Yugiri. From a hound at his throat to a puppy at his heel. If this is an act, it is a remarkable performance. Thank you for delivering Gosetsu back to us in one piece. We are lucky indeed to have friends who would journey to the other side of the world to help us. And repeatedly at that. We have much and more to think upon, but as regards to the Empire, we can but watch and wait. Now then, seeing as you've come all this way, you must allow me to show you around the Enclave. I would not have you thinking we've been idle in your absence. The rebuilding efforts proceed apace, I am pleased to say, and we are now ready to welcome home our countrymen who were displaced by the war. Should they so desire it, there is a place here for those who fled to Eorzea. We should be delighted to accept your invitation, Lord Hien, and I have no doubt that your subjects in Revenant's Toll will be heartened to hear that their lord has not forgotten them. Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. I just thought that Gosetsu and Yugiri would be back by now.
Forgive me, my lord, but Captain Jifuyu, Jifuya is nowhere to be found. Oh, he was here when I arrived. For well, now, I have taken Yotsuyu to a private chamber and assigned another to watch over her, my lord. But I find it passing strange that the captain should leave his post with nary a word. That does seem most unusual. If you mean to look for the man, we would be happy to assist you. We should be happy of your help. While I search without, mayhap you could ask our soldiers here if they know anything. I will join you. With respect, my lord, you should remain here. Should the Empire move against us, you would be better able to coordinate our response. Ha! And there I was thinking I was in charge. But you have the right of it. Go on, then. I will mind the house. You see the captain? He passed by a little while ago. I, uh, I wondered if I should tell someone. What happens. It did not look well, you see. I asked if aught was the matter, and he told me his past has caught up with him. But I doubt was that. There are older men in our ranks. Captain Jifuya, he was headed to the northern entrance when I saw him last. I was going to invite him to train with us, but he did not hear me call out to him. If you need him, I dare say the sentry on duty will be able to tell you more. Indeed, I suggested as much to Mistress Alize when she came asking earlier. Is something amiss? Hi, the captain went outside some few bells ago, and looking quite unwell, I'm sorry to say. This I mentioned to Lord Gosetsu, who straightaway struck out after him. I hope they will be alright. Gosetsu too? Seems everyone is bent on joining the search. That's all well and good, but someone has to stay behind. There's no telling what the Empire is plotting. You go on, Kinliana. Alfie and I, and I shall hold the fort. Your lord, he and... Leave me. Leave me, I beg of you. Say nothing of this. I, I, I was never here. There you are. Lady Yugiri. Lord Gosetsu. Forgive me uh, my abrupt disappearance. You have your reasons, I am sure. Will you not share them? I was... I was her master, when she was yet a courtesan. By the Kami. She worked in my establishment. Her father was a regular client of mine. One day, quite without preamble, he offered to sell her to me. She may be no maiden, he said, but she has some use left in her. He sold her short. When I first beheld her, I was struck by her beauty. And yet, behind her eyes there was an emptiness. It was as if she had given up on life. She seemed more a doll than a woman. There was no profession for her, but I knew she would be popular. And so it proved. Men flocked to drown themselves in that cold, bottomless gaze. The rest you know. She became an imperial informant and for her loyal service won the office of acting viceroy. 
while you came to serve the Liberation Front. It is said that the atrocities Yotsuyu committed were driven by vengeance. If so, I bear part of the blame for creating the monster she became. Joining the Front was meant to be my atonement. But the truth is... The truth is... I am a coward. Whose only thought was to escape her wrath. Then as now. I see. Then I shall recommend that you be assigned to a new post. I trust you have no objections, you giddy? None. It would not do to leave Yotsuyu in his care. I am in your debt. Who is it that you seek to protect, Gozetsu? Idle musings. Pray, pay me no mind. Gosetsu seeks to protect his new precious child. <laughs> I'm eating during voice cutscenes, so that will be the silence. Forgive me, now is not the time for brooding. Come, let us rejoin the others. Thank you for your help in the search. Gosetsu has told me all that transpired. I would not presume to defend the life Jifuya had led before he joined the front, nor will I condemn it. Frankly, it is not my place to judge. I will only say this. The Jifuya I know has ever been a man of courage. That he should feel driven to flee bespeaks the depth of his terror. Even now, Yatsuyu casts a shadow over the realm. But the question of what is to be done with her must wait. The Empire is on the move once more. While you were out searching for Jifuya, we received word from our shinobi allies. An Imperial airship has been sighted over Doman soil. Our visitor's main objective remains unclear. There may be another attempt to recover Yatsuyu, or a prelude to an invasion. Either way, the craft reportedly advances at speed, and appears bound for Castrum Fluminus. I mean to go there, and ascertain their intent. If we ride out in force, it will only end one way. We will keep our numbers to a minimum. Yugiri, Kilniana, can I count on you? Yes, my lord. Alize and I would fain play our part as well. We will not stand idly by while a common foe threatens the lands of our friends and allies. We would be glad of your help. You are acquainted with Hakuro, I, I believe, and I bid you seek him out and assist in maintaining order in the Enclave. When the people see an Imperial airship, they are liable to panic. I would have you reassure them, and should it come to it, aid in their evacuation. Very well, we shall depart at once. You take care. What of me, my lord? The Empire may well be after Yatsuyu. You are to remain here and guard her until my return. As you wish. Pray stay close to Kinliana and Yugiri. Well, well. Guard duty and not a breath of protest. Now I have seen it all. Gastrum Fluminus, then. Let us find out what the Empire's game is. I know the Empire's game. It's a long game. It's a long game that they are very good at.
Yep. <clears throat> the area is secure. Whatever our visitor's purpose, they plainly believe they can achieve it alone. The craft should come into view at any moment. Let us await them inside the cast room. Smoke signal? Thoughts, Yugiri? In former times, such signals were used to announce the coming of an emissary of peace. In Doma, at least. But could that truly be their intent? Who can say? Whatever they want, we cannot simply blast them out of the sky. Not when they were so gracious as to honor one of our cherished traditions. I would not have it said that we Dormans want for propriety. Then I shall go and reconnoiter. Nay, that won't be necessary. We will meet them openly. I would welcome this student of Dorman history in person, whomsoever he or she may be. As you wish, my lord. I shall arrange for a signal of our own to be fired in answer. Fuck this man. The one on the left, all right. Fuck the guy in white. Well, that we should be received by the Lord of Dorma himself. I but afford an emissary of peace, the courtesy he is due. Welcome to Dorma, my lord. Ah, where are my manners? I am Asahi Sas Brutus, ambassador plenipotentiary of Garlemont. He is heir to the Nayuri clan, and Yotsu's stepbrother. It seems I need not introduce myself. Not in the presence of the famed Yugiri Mistwalker. Your skills as a shinobi are known far and wide, my lady. It is true. The former acting viceroy is my sister. Yet, Bonds of kinship aside, we have precious little in common. As will soon become plain, I come not to sow strife, but to end it. I am of the Populares, a collective which represents the interests of the common man. Long have we labored to bring about reform to the Empire's provincial policy. Happily for us, our master acknowledges the need for change. Indeed, his radiance, Emperor Varis Zos Galvus, personally sanctioned this mission, granting me the authority to speak with his voice. To negotiate peace with Dorma. Well then, we have much to discuss. Will you accompany me to my hall? Gladly, my lord. What a trustworthy sounding slime ball. We shall escort our guests across the river to the Enclave.
Yugiri, pray go on ahead to Yuzuka Manor docks and see that the fairies are ready. So he, oh, fucking, fuck this guy. Lord Hien and I will accompany the Imperial Delegation on the first ferry. When you are ready, speak with the boatman and join us on the other side. Maxima, you're a good egg, though. Shout out to Maxima. One of the goodest boys. I have a strong feeling I'm not able to interact with this person during New Game Plus, but if I am, then I will do so. But I'm pretty sure in New Game Plus mode I'm probably in a weird instance. Yeah, no. Unable. Enough gear to make it worth it. There you are, Kenliana. So first things first, what do you think of the Enclave? I must say I'm quite proud of what my countrymen have accomplished in this time. We even have an eighth right now, courtesy of the Onishishu. Be sure to attune to it, would you? Once it has the Warrior of Light's seal of approval, people might actually start using the thing. Back onto the matter at hand. The Ambassador and his retinue were in my hall, taking their ease ahead of negotiations. I want you there when the talking starts. It will serve to send a message to the Empire that Eorzea and Doma stand united. I am not normally one for hollow posturing, but in this game of nations, such gestures carry weight. Oh, and should you feel uneasy about speaking for the Scions, Alfino and Alize will also be there. You need only eat, drink, and look imposing. They'll come. I'll be there. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. When you are ready, come and join me at the, my humble abode. The Kain can... The guardsmen will see you in. Hey, Hakuro. Good boy. Fortian is expecting you. May I show you in? On behalf of my delegation, I offer you my humblest thanks. Never did I imagine that I would meet the gallant and noble Lord of Dorma himself, nor be welcomed into his magnificent hall. You'll forgive me if we forgo the pleasantries. You say you are come to negotiate peace. Unless I am mistaken, such negotiations are typically conducted between sovereign nations. I was not aware that the Emperor had recognized Doma's sovereignty. His radiance has yet to do so, that much is true. Know, however, that he has expressed willingness to cede Doma to her ancestral masters and treat with her as a friend. Since the days of Empress Solus, 
The Empire has aggressively expanded its territory. While you may not agree with our Founding Father's policy of expansion, I believe there is room for discussion on the matter of his lifelong goal, to rid the world of icons. Icons are a blight upon this star. They cannot be suffered to exist. This you know as well as we. In his wisdom, Emperor Varus wishes to explore the possibility of an alliance to combat this common threat. On the condition that Dorma renounces summoning and pledges to police the Corjin's practice of it, his radiance would extend the hand of friendship. Dorma has never shown any appetite for summoning, and it should go without saying that we will address any threat to our people, Icon or otherwise. With regard to the Kordin, I must stress that they only resorted to summoning under extreme provocation. When the Ruby Sea was at peace and their sacred relics safe, they looked not to their common. For protection. Also, I accidentally summoned that primal because, like, all I, I just like brought the shit together, and like, they didn't really do anything. It just kind of popped out. <laughs> Yet even now, there are certain parties who would destabilize the region with ill-conceived military forays. Unless they alter their course, we cannot hope to be rid of icons. Quite, I can, but apologize. In seeking to eliminate icons, the Empire creates them. Tis an irony among ironies, one with which the people of Eorzea are well acquainted, I am told. Indeed, many summonings are the result of persecution, the weak being driven to call upon the divine for deliverance from the strong. So it was in Alamigo, the bitter fruit of Galian oppression. A tragic state of affairs. If we are to put an end to summoning once and for all, it shall not be through might, but harmony. Yet we continue to repeat our mistakes, oblivious to the lessons of history. My comrades and I would change all that. We, Populares, have campaigned long and hard for a shift in Imperial policy. And at last, the Emperor has seen fit to lend us an ear. Alas, there is a faction within Garlemald that would obstruct our every attempt at reform. A collection of pure-blooded Garlians who seek to consolidate their own supremacy. The Optimatis. Lest you wonder, theirs was the hand that loosed our forces on the Confederacy. T'was a regrettable incident, one that flies in the face of everything we believe. And I swear to do all in my power to prevent a reoccurrence. That would be most welcome. But if I may speak plain, if the Empire itself is not of one mind, how can we be certain that any peace we negotiate will be honored? I cannot blame you for doubting us. Indeed, I should find it strange if you did not. And so, in the name of building trust, I would like to make a proposal. A prisoner exchange. Hmm. Under Garlian rule, no few Dormans were conscripted into the Imperial Army. We would repatriate them in return for those of ours you captured in the recent conflict. Naturally, any exchange would include the acting Viceroy. Yotsu? What makes you think we have that? Forgive me, my lord. Was it not your wish to speak plain? Let us not play games. I desire only to work to our mutual benefit. The Optimates tried and failed to take my sister by force. I would succeed by peaceable means, thereby strengthening my party's hand. It would be a lie to say I would not also be glad of my sister's safe return. Hmm. A fellow plain speaker. How refreshing. Very well. 
Your proposal has merit, but I will need time to consider it. Of course, my lord. May we remain in Dorma until you have come to a decision? You shall be our honored guests. Yugiri, I leave the ambassador and his retinue in your care. See that they are well looked after. You have our gratitude, Lord Hien. We shall look forward to your answer. Press one to doubt, one spam intensify. <coughs> well, that was unexpected. You can say that again. I still don't know quite what to make of it all. But on the surface, the prisoner exchange does seem like a good way to begin. The question is, can they be trusted? Hmm, they had not to gain by divulging the details of their internal divisions. Stands, we have no reason to doubt them. But the ambassador's mention of Yatsuyu left me ill at ease. It made his grand talk of peace seem uncannily like a lengthy preamble. You think it might all be a ruse to facilitate her retrieval? Perhaps, though I cannot fathom why they would go to such lengths. Yatsuyu may have been the acting viceroy, but she is not Garlean, nor even Highborn. Her value most presumably lie in what she knows. Which brings us to the little matter of her memory loss. In her present condition, she would not yield any worthwhile intelligence, nor is she worth much as a bargaining piece. Alfino, you are well acquainted with the Empire's methods. I would have your thoughts on this matter. My knowledge is at your disposal, Lord Hien. While the Ambassador's proposal is appealing in principle, it would be remiss of us not to give it due scrutiny. Indeed, though it seems to me I have little choice but to accept regardless. With so many of our brothers and sisters languishing in Imperial camps, I cannot well turn my back on a chance to secure their repatriation. Only the Kami know when I will be afforded another. But ere we continue, shall we excuse these two? I fear what follows will bore them to tears. I was just about to show myself out as it happens. Come on, Kinliana, let's leave Alfino to dispense his copious knowledge. Someone is still sore from being made to watch at Sak uh, Sakazuki. I want to keep Alize company. We are safe enough for now. Ugh, oh, a chance to relax at last. I know when I am out of my depth, Kinliana. Though no weapons are drawn, a negotiation is no less a battle, and the stakes can be every bit as high. One misplaced word and people could die. Take someone with a cool head and I'll be the first to admit it's not me. So we're left with the eternal question. What do we do while they prattle on? Alright, for want of a better suggestion, let's say you to a brief tour of the newly liberated Doma. I'd be interested to hear how the people are faring in their own words. And it's not as if we'll be missed here. Or will we? Liliana, a moment if you would. Ah, Yugiri and Asahi, was it? You have some business with Kinliana? Business? No pleasure, my lady. I merely wish to exchange a few words with the famed slayer of gods and champion of Eorzea. It is truly an honor. Such heartfelt admiration. One could almost forget that you're an envoy of the Empire. Oh, is that so strange? We may have stood on opposing sides in the past, but I see no contradiction in lauding the woman who would do battle with our common enemy. But lest you forget, this is my homeland. I would be remiss of me not to at least thank her for containing the threat posed by the Kojin's vile icon. Now, if I may continue, as we speak, Lord Hien deliberates over my proposal, and I would take this time to see the land I once called home. The Lady Yugiri is certain to be jo jovial escort. The excursion would be all the more enjoyable for your company, and safer besides. The ambassador has the right of it. He does not like to come to harm with you at his side. Will you join us? I'm quite certain he'll be safe with you, Yugi. Ah, 
Come now, Kinliana, there's not else for us to do until Lord Hian has reached his decision. Were we not this moment discussing how best to learn about the current state of Go Doma? It's settled, then. The four of us shall make a brief excursion through Yangsha. Might we start with the town of Monzen? I would see what has become of Doma Castle. Very well, if you will follow me. Either a rank buddy. Nay, can this truly be Monzen, home to the cream of Doma Samurai? I'd heard that Yasu intended to send some few of her automata here, but only by way of warning. It should not have come to this. Indeed, her savagery served only to incense the people and spur them to rise. I skipped the dialogue somehow. Uh, rise up in protest. It was folly to think of such methods of governance could ever prove effective. Oh, the sooner we can begin to make amends for the senseless destruction, the better. Securing supplies and support for the reconstruction effort should not prove difficult, once our nations are formally at peace, of course. Yes, of course. If you would have, you would have a better view of what remains of the castle, we must proceed through the ruins. Travesty. A travesty. I remember the keep being so beautiful in the light of the setting sun, one would swear it was a flame. It is indeed a doleful spectacle. Mayhap we will rebuild it one day, when we have finished helping our people rebuild their lives. Spoken like a true popularis. The needs of the people must, of course, come first. Speaking of whom, would you be opposed to my seeing how they live firsthand? The village of Namai is but a short journey from here, if I'm not mistaken. By the river, yes. If you follow me, I will ready our boat. Hmm, I wanted to just teleport over there. Yeah, I'll see. You come check out my car. Room, room, motherfucker. Alright, it's a duty. I remember. Ready to cast off? Unfortunately. Fucking Asahi. Fucking Asahi. Doesn't roll off the tongue like something will later, but that's okay. Get back! I'm warning you! Someone's in trouble. Are you all right? Hi. What do they want with you? Yuki! And you not too! I, I... I don't know. We were returning from the Enclave when they came at us. It seems they won't go quietly. And neither will we.
Kill them all! Will not let you harm these innocents. We're tired of these games. Where are the reinforcements? All this for two children? What do they even want with them? They mean to overwhelm us. See to the reinforcements, quickly. Now, aim for the younglings. And in front of them. We'll bear the brunt of it. <clears throat> They would call for reinforcements? Then so shall we. <clears throat> Quickly, protect the children! Motherfuckers all have gap closers and I don't want at this level. Rude. Oh. Hold your ground. I will draw away their reinforcements. Well, Asahi, you're gonna have to do a better job because this guy's fighting shit. Guy's trying to hit the small bully who for some reason will not be going any further than this. Oh, well, I guess with all the reinforcements it makes sense, but really. Seems to be the last of them. You have nothing to fear, child. You are safe now. Thank you, sir. You saved us again. Thank you. If you're ever passing by our village, look us up. You'll always be welcome. Thank goodness we arrived when we did. Indeed. But what could have prompted the Red Coden to stray so far from the Ruby Sea? I presume these are the cell swords hired by Yotsu. If so, the answer is simple. Desperation. Bereft of Imperial employment, they seek other means to line their coin purses. Another sad legacy of the Empire's mismanagement. The Empire to which you have sworn allegiance? Must you always be so pointed? If we are to bring about lasting change, we must look beyond narrow allegiances. You have every right to doubt me, but in time, I hope you will come to see that we share a common goal. You and yours have fought fiercely to change the Empire from without, 
But if we are to end the cycle of conflict, the Empire must change from within. Am I wrong? Or we could just kill you all. That's not the answer. Not about that. True reform can only come from within. I knew you would understand. You have witnessed such change firsthand, after all, during your time in Ishgard. Dear me, I'd hope to convey my views on our nation's shared hopes under more peaceable circumstances. Yet, this forgettable little interlude did afford me a chance to see the famed Hero of Eorzea in action. And few Imperial soldiers can say that. At least, few who live to tell the tale. Well, after this little ordeal, I believe it may be time for us to return to the Enclave. Return, my lord, but what of Namai? You seemed so eager to observe the villagers going about their daily lives. To be frank, I still am, but I rather doubt the good people of Namai would take too kindly to the sight of a man in imperial uniform with blood still dripping from his blade. Even in your company, my presence would only prove a distraction. Fret not, however. Thanks to the three of you, I've seen a great deal more than I otherwise would. With any luck, Lord Hien will have finished considering my proposal by the time we return. Question is Fury in the Enclave or is she on the dock? I don't know why they do this. The Enclave is its own map, and for some reason they just. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna teleport to the Enclave, and then worse comes to worse, I'll just take the boat backwards. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, for some reason, if you have to go to the Dome and Enclave, they'll point the quest marker at the dock that leads to the boat there, even though we have an Aetherite. So there's no reason for that. Yeah, no, she is here. That's fine. Thank you again for agreeing to join me. If not for your aid, the Kojin may well have overwhelmed us. Pray go on ahead. Lord Hien is expecting you. I will remain without the keep and watch over our guest. Well, we'd best not keep him waiting. Welcome back, my friend. Yugiri tells me you accompany to an Asahi on a tour of Yangsha. I'd hoped you might take the opportunity to recover from your exertions at, the, at Sakazuki. But I gather your time was well spent. Until the ambassador affords Yugiri a chance to make a full report, however, I must rely on, your supply, on you to supply the details. So please, tell us how it all unfolded. The Red Kojin, here. Have there been any other such incidents since the liberation? Only one that I'm aware of. They're planning some new venture here in Yangsha. You will need to increase patrols. In any event, I'm indebted to you for fighting them off. But tell me, and don't be modest, was Asahi truly the first to leap to the youngster's aid? He was. I was quick to doubt him when we first met, but his desire to save them seemed quite genuine. It is possible he believes what he's saying. In the time you've known him, you've always been an excellent judge of character. What do you make of the ambassador? Still don't think he can be trusted. I am magical and have future knowledge. The question of what is true intention may be remains. Regardless of his aim, I am resigned to playing his game. For now, at least. Well, for swearing summoning should be simple enough, considering you never dabbled it in the first place. This just leaves the somewhat thornier question of how to police the Red Kojin. It was with that very question in mind that I sought Alphino's counsel. Thanks to his knowledge of the icons and the ritual used to invoke them, I believe we've identified a workable solution. As you will recall, Susanna was summoned forth using the power of relics locked away in the Kojin's treasure vault on the Isle of Zeki. Though said relics remain there to this day, it is all but certain that the act of summoning exhausted their stores of ether, making subsequent summonings impossible. Assuming it is the case, preventing the Primal's return rests on denying the Red Kojin the means to amass new stores of ether either via the acquisition of crystals or the relics they are wont to collect. For this, I plan to enlist the aid of our friends, the Blue Kojin. 
With Stoma's liberation, we have forged closer bonds with Boonchin and his people. And with their support, I am quite confident we can keep the Red from obtaining what they require to call upon this Suzano. And what are the prisoners? They will be exchanged as agreed, and I will give full credit to Asahi for the success of the transaction. If there's aught we can do to help the Popularis gain her favor, I mean to see it done. But first, I have some unfinished business to attend to. Would you all come with me? Yes, of course, but what manner of business? A past mistake which I would see put right. One which has weighed heavy on my mind. I had her brought here in secret while the three of you kept our guest company. The world has not been kind to you, it is true. But that does not excuse your sins. You should be at the bottom of the river. Yet here you are. The living, breathing proof of my failure. A failure for which I would now make amends. What? What did I do? I don't remember. Was it really so terrible? Tell me, please. What did I do? You speak of sins, my lord. But at whose feet do those sins lie? With the soldiers who committed the crimes, or those who commanded them to do so? With both, I would say. For all have a conscience, and all must choose. But with no memory of who she is, or what she has done, what sin remains to be cleansed? You ask that I show mercy? I ask. Why the heavens so fit to deny me my rest? Why Yotsuyu was spared not only death, but the bitter memories of her life? You truly think it the will of the Kami? If so... Her life is not mine to take. It is yours to safeguard. Come the hour of the exchange. If her memories have not returned, she may remain here in Doma to live out her days as Tsuyu. But if they do, the Garleans shall have their Viceroy. Though the people will protest, they will come to accept my decision when they have been reunited with their loved ones. Thank you, my lord. Now then, I believe we have kept our guests waiting long enough. Did Gosetsu not seem strange to you? His sympathy for your two, pardon. I know his powers of endurance only too well, but after all he has suffered, even he should not be on his feet. He puts on a brave face for our sakes, but it would not surprise me if he lacked the strength to raise his blade. Though I suppose if he and Yotsu are to enjoy a life of peace and quiet, he will have little use for it. It falls to us to shape that future, one in which he need never again set foot on the battlefield.
With the Atsuyu safely in Gosetsu's care, all that remains is to answer Asahi's proposal. I realize other matters demand your attention, but I would ask that you stay a while longer to see this business through. I believe this is the last quest of the patch. The name of this quest seems familiar. This would be 4.2. My apologies. Our deliberations took longer than expected. Think nothing of it. The time afforded me the opportunity to go on a rather rousing excursion through Yansha. You have reached a decision then? We are willing to cooperate with you in combating the Icon threat and also in the exchange of prisoners. Assuming you accept our conditions, of course. As you know, your sister is in our care. Due to certain complications, however, we are hesitant to release her into your custody. Complications? She was inside Doma Castle when it collapsed. Though she survived, she remembers nothing of her past life, not even her name. To clarify, she is in our care not as a prisoner, but as a vulnerable citizen of Doma. Are you saying you refuse to release her? Not at all, if her memory returns before the appointed hour. And if not, what exactly? You will accommodate her here in Dorma? Well, I sincerely doubt she will be of any great strategic value to the Empire. She spends her days daydreaming of Dango. Dango? How dreadful. Very well. In light of our recent misstep in Sakazuki, it seems only fair that I show you the same understanding you have shown us. Though I do have one small request. Regardless of Yotsuyu's value to the Empire, she is yet my sister. Before I leave, might you permit me to speak with her in private? Of course. Perhaps you could even bring her a plate of dango. She would be most pleased. Yugiri will see you to her chambers. He does love her, Dongo. <laughs> oh, Suyu. Forgive me, my lord, but he, has he not been gone over long? Perhaps I should... Calm yourself, Gosetsu. I understand your concern, but we have to wait. He deserves that much. I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting. Thank you for your understanding. Long did I dream of this reunion, but never did I imagine it would be so joyless. A part of me hoped your stories of her condition were just that, but alas, it is as you say. To you. Do you remember anything of this man? Anything at all? I... no. I am a stranger to her. That much was clear to me from a single look. I leave her in your care. As you wish. Now, if you'll excuse me, my superiors are long overdue for a report. They'll be elated to hear of our arrangement. Of that I have no doubt. As for the exchange itself, once I have obtained the relevant permissions, I will arrange for your people to be relieved of their various duties and sent here to Yangsha. It will take time, of course. Of course, you may be rest assured your soldiers will be well cared for until your return. We will also begin taking steps to better counter the threat of the Kojin and their icon. Before you take your leave, there is one other matter. I am informed it was you who took lead in rescuing two young domans from a band of Kojin sellswords. I have not yet had time to thank you properly. Please, there's no need to thank me. I only did what anyone would do under the circumstances. Fortunately, I was in good company at the time. The blood of the Red Kojin is the, of the Empire's making. Were it not for our transgressions, those children would not have needed saving. 
The people of Doma have suffered enough, my lord, and I promise to do all in my power to spare them further pain, yet at the hands of the Kojin were indeed the Empire. I pray the Emperor will see things as you do. There may yet be hope for us all. Until we meet again. Osetsu, as before I leave Yatsuyu to you. We eat lots of dango. All the dango. I invite the rest of you to join me outside. Let's treat Asahi to a proper farewell. The Ambassador's airship awaits at Castrum Flaminus. Let's be off. Auto teleport? Let's go. They're like, you've already walked back and forth seven times. I guess we'll just send you there immediately. Now, for anyone who did not press F to doubt for this man, just you wait. I wish you a safe journey. This has been a most enjoyable visit. I look forward to our next meeting. Maxima, would you take the others and see that all is ready for our departure? I simply cannot leave without first giving thanks to the Warrior of Light for accompanying me through Yansha. And facade dropped. <laughs> he didn't even last an hour. Mark me, savior of the savages. There will be a reckoning. Them crazy eyes. Nope, and bad timing. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good fever dream while you're being threatened by a man with crazy eyes? to run, traitor! Ignorant savages! Killing us will avail you naught! For every Imperial you cut down, a thousand more will come. Abandon this foolish endeavor and surrender! You may yet serve our righteous cause. How dare you speak of righteousness? You who forsook kith and kin to serve conquerors! Be glad I grant you this mercy. <sighs> what in the... It's the boy. Reinforcements? No, just one. Cut him down.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. This one is promising. Who remains to offer us resistance? A, a, a host of rebels led by Lord Cayenne hold the enclave across the river. Lord Cayenne? The king of the... The former king of Dorma, sir. They say he is one of the greatest swordsmen alive. Is that what they say? Surely you jest. That was Xenos Ye Galvas, Legatus of the Twelfth, the Crown Bloody Prince. I heard he was strong, but that... that was frightening. That was... Lord Xenos. And thus, a fanboy was born. Everything you are, your power, even your face, it vexes me. You know, your face. Go on. Lash out like the beast you are at an emissary and jeopardize the newfound peace between Dorma and the Empire. My lord was destined to lead us unto a glorious new age. Your light is nothing to his radiance. I will cherish this moment, lock it away within my heart, until the day we meet again. You look troubled, my friend. Was it something he said? It was everything he said. He's fucking nuts. That man's crazy. Also, he's got a hard on for Xenos. Who I killed. Whoops. Of all the memories to witness, I had my doubts about him, but I would never have guessed he was a disciple of Xenos. My lord. Calm yourself, you giddy. I set no store by him or his enlightened brethren. But if by treating with them there is even the faintest hope we might secure the return of our conscripted brothers and sisters, I must play this game. After the way I risked their lives in the rebellion, I owe them that much. My lord, you bear no blame for their fate. If not blame, then responsibility. They were prisoners, and still I chose to fight knowing they could be executed in retaliation. But now we have a chance to bring them home. If it means bargaining with a monster, so be it. My lord. Besides, I think he likes me, which is more than some can say. <laughs> yeah, I'm in danger. <laughs> Except, you know, I'm not, because God. Literally a god.
It makes no sense. Why would he bother keeping up the pretense for so long, only to drop it right before the very end? Mayhap he no longer thought it necessary, having secured Doma's cooperation in the prisoner exchange. He truly is a disciple of Xenos, his possible emotions simply got the better of him. Remaining calm around the woman who slew his lord will have taken its toll. Whatever the explanation, now is not the time for hasty reprisals. We shall proceed as planned. The Red Coachman must be placed under surveillance, and the Garlean prisoners made ready for the exchange. But you need not concern yourselves with the details. Leave the affairs of Doma to us. When the hour of the exchange draws near, we will call for you. I should certainly hope so. Whatever the Empire's true intent, we would be on hand to play our part, either to defend Doma or help usher in a lasting peace. I had thought we might use the time to return to Eorzea, but given the volatility of the situation, mayhap it be best we remained in Kugane. Agreed. Between Yatsuyu's amnesia and Asahi's dubious agenda, I'd say we have ample reason to remain in the neighborhood. If anything should happen, anything at all, you must send for us at once. Oh, I will. Of that you have my word. Charting a path through the Sea of Troubles promises to be difficult enough. I am not so proud as to attempt the feat alone. To Gugane, then. Tachiru and the others must know of what transpired here. And you need to get railed for spending too much money. I'm trying to decide. Do I want to go one more patch? It'll probably take a couple of hours. Okay, we've been live, what? We've been live five hours. The first patch was like three and a half, and this one was only like one and a half, but this one didn't have as much as far as like dungeons and extra shit like that um the next one's gonna be lengthy because i know there's a lot of cutscenes. only 9 40. i could probably finish it i'm a little bit tired but i think i do want to finish it if i can get through part three in one one shebang just because the next patch really Finishes this arc, and then the next two are the arcs that lead into Shadowbringers. My, it seems you're all in quite a predicament. Well, should we receive any urgent missives from Doma, rest assured you'll be the first to know of it. Yes, of course, we're pursuing a number of ventures to replenish our coffers, but I suppose that can all wait if any urgent news should come through the office. Ah, <sighs> About that. I wish to apologize, Tataru. It was reckless of me to make such a purchase without first consulting you. You may be certain, however, that I mean to reimburse the Scions, even if it means drawing upon my personal funds. That's very thoughtful of you, but I'm sure it won't come to that. Sorbonne's business proposition is as promising as it sounds. Kiliana should have no difficulty wiping the red from our ledger. Don't put this on me. Forgive me, Kinliana. It would seem I have unwittingly heaped my financial troubles upon you. I swear, I will pay you back. Though I fear I will struggle to cover together anything of monetary value. Knowledge I can gather in abundance. To start, I plan to investigate the divisions forming within the Empire. Mayhap Raoul and his associates have heard something on the subject. Regardless, the more we know about the politics of Garlemald, the better the chances in predicting the Imperial's next move, which might yield you an advantage on the day of the prisoner exchange. Knowing what we do of Asahi's, uh, knowing what we do of Asahi's apparent resentment towards you, I cannot say what he hopes to gain from it. But if there's even the faintest chance of a lasting peace could be forged between Doma and the Empire, what choice have we but to try? Lord Hien had the right of it. Asahi may very well be a monster, but we must play his game. For now. Arranging the prisoner exchange proved easier than I thought. Yes, my lord will be most pleased. Everything is going according to plan.
Can you truly remember nothing? Nothing at all. Were we friends? Yes. We were good friends, you and I. In fact, I've brought you a gift. soon, as you gaze into that mirror, you will remember the woman staring back at you. It's so pretty. Who are you? Meanwhile, in the Imperial Capital, the Fortress of Doom. How are you feeling, my lord? Fine, now leave me. Motherfucking Xenos. But he slit his throat. How could he be alive? Whoa! On to the next patch. Ah, Kinliana, impeccable timing. We've just received a letter from Lord Hien. He writes that the Domans are con coordinating the efforts with the Blue Kojin to maintain a constant watch over the Red. By staying on the lookout for signs of crystal hoarding and the like, they mean to nip any summoning attempts in the bud, therefore satisfying the conditions for peace set down by the Ambassador. Excuse me, sorry. For the Garlean's part, the Popularis have sent word that a vessel bearing Doman conscripts is soon to arrive in Yangsha. It would seem that the prisoner exchange is to proceed as planned. Lord Hien requests your presence, and I share his view that you should be on hand at this crucial juncture. According to the letter, Yatsuya's memory is yet to return, so it looks like she'll be living out the rest of her days in Doma. Assuming the ambassador means to honor the agreement, of course. Before we get to that, however, I would think it wise to assess her condition one last time. The Domans have missed any change in her mental state, however slight. It would be better if Asahi weren't the one to spot it. Agreed. Let us make straightaways for the Enclave, then. Lord Hien will be waiting. I trust you will cope in our absence, Sitaru. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. Just be sure to come back safely. Ah, I see my letter reached you across the Ruby Sea. Thank you for coming so swiftly. Though I wrote at some length on the subject of the forthcoming exchange, there was one matter I neglected to mention. It concerns Gosetsu. As you may have observed, he returned from his ordeal rather worse for wear. Despite his best efforts to conceal his condition, or perhaps because of them, he recently collapsed. Good gods, is he alright? Confined to bed and grumbling without cease, but he has shown signs of recovery. He made me promise not to tell you, lest you worry unduly, which was all very well when you weren't here. Now that you are here, however, I think at high time he received some visitors. Might you spare him a moment? Yatsuya was scarce left his side, and I imagine you are curious to see what has become of her as well. We will visit him at once. Kinliana, Alize, shall we? A 
我分我一次。Not so frail that I cannot feed myself. I grow weary of the taste of gruel. You don't like it? Can I fetch you something else? Aye, wine. Or if that is not wholesome enough, I don't know. A sweet persimmon from Namai. I enjoyed them in my youth. A persimmon. Nay, pay me no mind. I am full. Besides, we have guests. I hope we are not interrupting your meal. We had heard you were confined to bed and thought you might welcome some visitors. Confined to a gross exaggeration, a trifle drained from my exertions, perhaps. But with a little rest, I shall be fighting fit again in no time. Take off your clothes. <laughs> Gosetsu, is this how you've been spending your time? My lady, I assure you, this is not. <clears throat> we are not, in fact, fucking. To wash you, you stink. <laughs> what are all these scars? There are so many of them. A life of battle will leave its mark upon a man. You done shot him many times. <laughs> Is something wrong to you? It's nothing. I'm fine. I just remembered unloading an entire clip into your abdomen. Wild. But leave me be, woman. I will not be fussed over like some newborn babe. You're the one who took your shirt off, Ray. <laughs> Got you whipped. They make a convincing pair, do they not? On first acquaintance, one would think him a doting grandsire and her, her a model grandchild. Indeed. Yeah, had someone told me a year ago that I would live to bear witness to such a scene, I would have declared them mad. That aside, I am relieved to see Gosetsu has lost none of his spirit. What a turn of events. I mean, for her to suddenly be watching over him? You couldn't make it up. Although I suppose Gosetsu is an old man. With the way he charges through life, it can be easy to forget. Aye, he has resisted a decrepitude with the same defiance he showed the enemies of Doma. But no matter how adamant his will, no man can carry on forever. He has pushed himself beyond the limits of endurance too many times. Even if his health returns, the fact remains he will never again be the warrior he once was. He has given his life he has given all for his liege and land, and we will ask no more. And what of his nurse? If Yatsuyu is feigning that, well, she certainly has me fooled. This is no pretense. Yugiri, out of all of us, I would think that you had the hardest to convince. So, what makes you so sure? I have been spying on Yatsu from the shadows, waiting for the missteps that would betray her charade for what it is. But her mask has never slipped, not once. She has remained in character from the first. One evening, I watched her as she sat in her chambers, unguarded and alone. She had taken the dishes from the cupboard and was pretending to prepare dinner right then and there on the tatami. A child's game. Even the warrior's shinobi would not go to such lengths, but I can conclude that her mind is truly broken. Well, that's good enough for me, and everyone else I would have it. Aye, right, the matter is settled. Yatsuyu will become Suyu and begin a new life here in Doma. Before that can happen, however, we need to present her to the ambassador one last time to prove that her memory is truly gone. But I would not risk parading her in front of our returning conscripts. Her presence at the exchange would only stir up mutinous thoughts. 
Understandably, she's as good as fasten the chains around their necks. Aye, which is why I mean to conclude this business with Tsuyu first. Out of the sight of my countrymen, will you help me? You're at your service. There is no higher purpose than the pursuit of peace. My thanks. The Garleans are on their way, and we must prepare to welcome the ambassador. We will meet you at the docks with Tsuyu. Oh, the irony of me riding this doggo. So sad. Big sad irony pup. The random mount macro new. Shall we wait here then? Lord Hien should not be long. My friends, have you seen Suyu? She's nowhere to be found. What? But the Garleans will be landing in a matter of moments. If she's fled, could it mean her memories have returned? I know not. Yugiri is scouring the streets as we speak, but it is possible Suyu has left the Enclave altogether. Captain, a word. Did you perchance carry a fair-skinned woman across the river? Fair-skinned women, my lord, I do not rightly know. I think... Y yes, yes, my lord. Now that you mention it, there was a lady among the passengers whom I do not recall having seen before. Her face was hidden by the brim of her hat, but I remember her taking her hand to help her on the boat. Why does new fallen snow it was? She's someone of important, my lord. Have I done something wrong? Wrong. No, no. I was merely hoping to catch our guests before she departed. Be at ease, Captain. It would seem that Tsuyu has crossed the river. Kami, help me. No good can come of this. It seems Tsuyu has gone unrecognized thus far, but Kami, help me. If someone catches a clear view of her face, I must find her before that happens. Responsibility for her disappearance, for all of this, lies with me, but I would ask for your aid nonetheless. You're at your service, Lord Yen, now as before. Let us make the crossing and begin our search. You go on ahead. Someone should let Yugiri know what we've learned. I'll join you on the other side. We have no way of knowing where Suyu is headed, so we must best divide our forces. I will take the Kusakari and its surrounds. Alfino, if you would take the road to Castrum Fluminus. Emiliana, forgive me, but could I ask you to interrogate the residents of uh, Yuzuka Manor? One of the Namazu may well have seen our quarry. Everyone is in agreement. Let us board the skiff and hope the Kami smile upon our efforts. Welcome to Yuzuka Manor. Yes, yes. If there's anything you care to know, you need only... Hmm. A pale-skinned woman? I've seen no such traveler, I'm sorry to say. Oh, sorry. Scaly Sin Namazu, on the other hand, we have an abundance. Unusually pale-skinned. Yes, yes. I saw this woman on the way back from my fishing trip. She just crossed the shallows east of here and was headed in a northeasterly direction, for the most part. Her steps did not seem certain. If you hurry, you might still catch her. Blasting for the Centurio seals. Instead of wasting my time swapping classes.
Be no sign of Yatsuyu to the north. Perhaps she's somewhere further off to the northeast. Put her dad away! Nagasana Byatsuyu, perhaps she's further to the northeast. Byatsuyu is nowhere to be seen. Lying on the ground a short distance to the north, you spy a familiar-looking wide-brimmed hat. Cursory glance is all that's required to confirm your suspicions. It is the same hat Yatsu was wearing when you found her in Sakazuki. Nyana, before you ask, our search of Ka uh, Kusakare and its surroundings has yielded exactly not. Save this chance reunion with you, I suppose. Mistress Alize has gone to assist her brother at the castrum. It is she who informed me of the situation. I joined Lord Hien here shortly thereafter. How did you fare at Yuzuka Manor? Any sign of our missing guest? No, but this is her hat. Towards Namai, by the Kami. If the villagers recognize her, it will not end well. You must hurry. Yugiri, I will check the pad paddies. The village square is yours. Greetings. Might I have one of your... Wait! Please! I only wanted a persimmon! Kami, save us! Her spirit has returned! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! It can't be. She couldn't have survived. What did I... What, what did I do? As if you don't know! Good people of Namai, be at ease, I pray you. You have naught to fear. My lord, forgive me, but what is that monster doing here? They told us she was dead. I too was surprised to learn of her survival. More even than you, I would hazard. Twas I who cut her down, I who left her to her fate. But it would seem the Kami had other plans. By some miracle, both she and Gosetsu were spared when the keep collapsed, though Yotsuga's preservation came at the cost of her memory. You're saying she's forgotten? Forgotten everything she's done? 
Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes! And we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! What I saw then, it's all true. I'm sorry! I'm so, so sorry! Supposed to forgive you. Here, there's no need to cry. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? She's not the same. This kid gets it. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. I will, however, see that she is watched at all times. Rest assured that there will be no more unannounced visits to the village. As your lord, I ask that you leave her fate in my hands and suffer her to live for now. Please, Issei. All right. I'll keep my peace. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Also, you just wanted a persimmon because Gosetsu wanted a persimmon. She's a good egg now. She was before, but she's a good egg now. Ugh, that would have been better avoided, but at least it did not end in bloodshed. Judging by Suyu's reaction, she remains oblivious to the events of her former life. This was no escape attempt. Nay, it seems it was an offhanded request of Gosetsu's which brought her to Namai. She came in search of a persimmon. Ha! And they say fruit is good for the health. I do hope Gosetsu find the taste to his liking. Well, we have certainly taken a long way around, but let us continue on to Castrum Fluminus and our meeting with the ambassador. Alfino and Alize should still be there conducting the search. You just wanted to get her good grandpa Gosetsu a persimmon! Suyu's a good girl! Yatsuyu sure isn't, but Suyu is! God. I just had a thing for the villains this expansion. I loved Yatsuyu, I loved Fordola. Something about angry women. I don't know. <laughs> Seems our Imperial guests have already arrived. It's time to meet with the Ambassador.
What a pleasure it is to see you once more, Lord Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. A pleasure to see you too, Ambassador. Forgive us our late arrival. You have our people aboard the airship? Exactly as agreed. We would leave you in no doubt as to the purity of our intentions. I dare say it was the self-same spirit of cooperation which prompted you to bring Yotsuyu here today. Indeed. Before excluding her from the exchange, I thought it only fair that you see her condition for yourself. Physically, she is in fine health, but her mind is unchanged. So I see. But all need not necessarily be lost. In anticipation of this tragic turn of events, I took the liberty of inviting some special guests. Fuck you. Just let's see you live her happy life, damn it. <sighs> ah, Yotsuyu. You look well. Of all the people. Is something wrong, dear sister? These are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories? I have to take this to Gosetsu. <laughs> it would seem my little surprise was not sufficient. You needn't glare at me so, Lord Here. I merely did what any loving son would do for his family. Lest you doubt, I am content to leave the acting viceroy in your care. Pray, treat her as you would any daughter of Dorma. Do not grow too fond of this place, dear sister. You will come back to us ere long. We continue with the exchange as planned, then. Very good. The structure across the river should serve our needs. We shall await you there with the conscripts. If you would bring your captives. Agreed. Until then, Ambassador. Fuck you. Your fucking parents. Dad literally sold her to a whorehouse. I knew better than to trust Asahi, but that was a dirty trick. 
Still, unpleasant as it was, we have at least put the matter of Suyu's future to rest. I have sent her back to the Enclave with Yugiri to give Gosetsu his precious persimmon. Come, let us follow them. You have that look, Alfino. What is it? Yo, I guess I did finish the Lantern event. I finished it with, like, a day to spare. I finished, like, two two minutes before raids started yesterday. <laughs> I, I didn't... Actually, I think I did end up doing everything completely, but I... Yeah, I, I cleared out the shop. Yeah. Oh, nothing of consequence, most like. We can discuss it upon our return. Yes, I got Ningguang's outfit. Cleared out the shop and got that spicy outfit, and I got a C3 Yanfei. <laughs> I don't use Kaching, and I'm so tempted to buy that outfit for Kaching. <laughs> we should pay a visit to Gosetsu and reassure him about Suyu's fate. He will want to know that the Empire has finally relinquished its claim on her. But it hasn't, though. Yeah, and I love that she put it on just for the Traveler. It was like, Ayo, fireworks. I'm a little cute. My lord, come in, come in. When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. She's realizing she's not a good person. She then claimed weariness and retired to her chamber. Tell me, what happened to upset Dude, her? Dude, I am so ready for Yai in four days. I'm happy I got it working on my phone. The ambassador arranged a surprise reunion with her foster parents. All oh, right, they weren't actually her parents. It was um, her foster mother was, I think, her aunt. Yeah, I think they're technically her aunt and uncle. They still are terrible people. Fuck those guys. It was plain their presence caused her great distress, but she seemed otherwise unaffected. And I'm excited for the Not trial. Was bad. As a child, was she not? It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. Hmm. I like this Asahi lesson. Fuck Asahi! Be that as it may, he has agreed to allow Yotsuyu to remain with us in Doma. Our primary concern now is to hand over the prisoners without incident. And bring our people safely home. There was one other detail at the meeting which caught my attention. I assume you all noticed the rather suspect crates within the castrum. The Imperials were quick to retrieve them afterwards, but I wonder. Out with it, brother. You fear they might contain bombs or war machines? Bristol. If the ambassador wanted me dead, he has had ample opportunity. No, assassination is not his intent, but we should be on our guard for other acts of treachery. Mm. To you. My lord, forgive me, but the lady yachts you. She's gone. Again. Gone? I beg your pardons, my lords. I was certain she'd fallen asleep. No, no, the responsibility is mine. It was I who gave her a room instead of a cell. She lost her memory. She may simply have wandered outside. We will organize... You're a nice guy, so you're not going to imprison a girl with call upon partial assistance. brain damage. She thinks she's a child. <laughs> what we get for being the good guys, we feel bad for the previous tyrant. Oh, Yatsu, you... I, this, all of this just makes me ver, ver sad. Like I said, I, you know, I had a thing for the villains the sex back. <laughs> you don't deserve help. 
Don't even go over there, Ken. Don't even look at him. They deserve it. And also, you're gonna have a fever dream and see exactly what happened. Because that's just how, you know, that's how your powers work. No! You get no help! Yep, and now I have to watch. <laughs> Fuck Asahi. Fuck his family. God, they make me so irrationally angry. <laughs> so you could have lived a happy life as a child with amnesia, but no, they had to come ruin everything. <laughs> she could have been so happy with Grandpa Gosetsu. Not after what I did to him. Yeah, you tortured him for like a hot minute, but he forgave you. Who's there? <gasps> oh, it's you. What are you doing out here in the dark? This is the Enclave, is it? When the soldiers dragged us back to Doma, you were the last person I expected to see. You're the bane of our existence, Yotsuyu! A font of misery! You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh no! You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure! We had our perfect life in the capital, and now... They're making us wallow in this muddy ruin like common swine! I don't deserve this! But you do, though. Now, now, dear, that'll do. There seems little point in berating the girl when she scarcely remembers her own name. Our time would be better spent contemplating how we're to survive this unhappy predicament. You've kept your looks at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyout. Maybe enough to get us to Kugane and start a new business. <laughs> ah, my beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Y'all done fucked up. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. To the very depths I have sunk, my soul steeped in spite and rotten to the core. The self-righteous hide behind justice, but I need no such mask. Father, mother, was it not you who made me into this monster? Who taught me the truth of this miserable world? For years I knew naught but the taste of pain and humiliation. But the time has come to savor my vengeance against Doma. Against all my enemies. And it begins... With you! Y Yotsuyu! <laughs> Don't act surprised! You sold her to a whorehouse! Like, hello? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, y'all fucking deserve that. Two characters I do not feel bad for. Even a little. Her, on the other hand, I feel terrible for. She may have been a villain and tyrant, but dear God, do they make you feel bad for her. <laughs> <laughs> she was about to off herself because she remembered everything. And she felt bad about it until they showed up. Well done, dear sister. Did I not say you would come back to us? God, fuck this guy. Brother dearest, what a surprise. You always were a cold-blooded little worm. I doubt you thought twice about sending our parents to their deaths. Your dagger yet drips with their blood, and you presume to judge me. To be frank, I didn't think you had the strength to slay them so cleanly. A single thrust each. I'm impressed. But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance, and the power to see it through. Oh, I'm glad I decided to stay and do this patch. The next trial gives me big feels, and the music is... Ooh, music is so good. I don't care, personally. Zero fucks given that you do not want death. Any sign of her? What happened here? Gotsu, you extracted sweet vengeance. By the way, she has her memories back. <laughs> I knew what would happen if she recovered. And still, I did nothing. You say she left with her brother? Yeah, and did you just like skip the part where I said she was gonna kill herself? Whatever he wants with her, <sighs> he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. But this is neither the time nor the place. We must gather the others. Yeah, Fordola and Yatsuyu, I think, are both supposed to be parallel characters for, like, they're both not Garleans, they both worked for Garlemald, and they both had shitty childhoods. The only difference is that Fordola's mother loved her, but her dad got killed by a bunch of people, so that didn't matter. <laughs> we have recovered the Narius' remains, and we'll hold the cremation anon. Would that they had never again set foot in Doma. I broke on the news to Gosetsu myself. He was quiet. I think it best that he be allowed some time alone with his thoughts. Damn it. We're not at the trial yet. I want to go to the trial. <laughs> so, my friends, that which we feared has come to pass. Yatsu has regained her memory and returned to the Imperial Fold. It is by no any measure a cruel twist, not least for Gosetsu, but one which does not invalidate our agreement. According to the terms of the contract, we were bound to surrender Yatsuyu into the Garleon's hand should her condition improve prior to the hour of the exchange. By that reckoning, all is, if not as it should be, then it, as it must be. The second accept. What I cannot accept are the unconscionable lengths to which Asahi went to achieve this outcome. Given his recent conduct and his apparent admiration for Xenos, it is plain he cannot be trusted, and that is to say nothing of the unexplained containers he insists on bringing to our meetings. Whatever the ambassador is planning, I think it unlikely our negotiations will end peacefully. In the event of hostilities, the safety of the conscripts must be our first concern. As such, I would have an escape route in place before the meeting begins. A wise precaution. If the main structure of Castrum from Linus is to be the stage for the exchange, then I believe a thorough inspection is in order. The Citadel has stood ever empty since the Imperial withdrawal. While the, we took steps to ensure that it could not be defended by an occupying force, it is entirely possible that the Ambassador has arranged things there to his advantage. I will slip inside and make certain we have an unobstructed exit. Pray allow me to join you. I have some experience with Imperial facilities, and should matters take a turn for the worse, I would hope to be of at least some use. Very good. That should be enough to guarantee us a way out of the Castrum. Beyond that, however... 
We need a ship to ferry the conscripts back to the Enclave. With every skiff we have, it would take several trips to evacuate everyone. A confederate Sekibune, on the other hand, would require only a single run, and leave us far less vulnerable on the water. Assuming, of course, Ratio can be convinced to part with one. Why'd I take the lead on this? I've had dealings with Ratio and his pirates before. And I won't be alone, will I, Kinliana? Down on me. You're my favorite scion. Much appreciated. I quite fancy parlaying with pirates again. It's just a shame Lise won't be there to reprise her role. Hm, I am certain you'll make a persuasive pair, but I think I will accompany you with these neg negotiations all the same. My lord, the ruler of Doma should not be consorting with common brigands. Come now, you Giri. They stood with us against the Empire. We would ask their aid once more. We must treat with them as equals. Our presence shall serve to demonstrate our sincerity. Indeed, my lord. Pray forgive my presumption. By your leave, Master Alfino and I shall be about our task. Ian, you don't have to come. I want to go on an outing with my favorite. We should be on our way to Onokoro. Time is short, and Ratio must take some might may take some convincing. Yeah, no. Fucking four days for Guy Miko. Long time waiting. The waiting room is just it just keeps on ticking. Also, I know I posted in the Discord, but holy fuck, I'm so excited for the new Fire Emblem Warriors. <laughs> I was waiting for the day they released a DLC for Three Houses, and instead they gave us a whole fucking game. <sighs> Fire Emblem, Three Houses fans unite. Non-Three Houses fans are mad because they want anything that isn't Three Houses, but the rest of us, we are eating well. <laughs> she is so cute, and I love the nuance that she's not holding a mirror. That's a holdout that, like, this could be the golden timeline. This could be the one. <laughs> well, there's a face I didn't expect to see. What brings the noble lord of Doma into the company of bilge rats such as we? You've come to offer Doman chains in place of Garlean ones, and I'm afraid you've wasted a trip. Ha <laughs> ha! And what fine subjects you would make with your fleet at our disposal, our restoration efforts would be hastened tenfold. But let us speak seriously. I stand before you not to demand your fealty, but to request your aid once more. Dimitri got therapy. Fucking Hubert. Did you see Hubert's design with that haircut? Goddamn, Hubert. <laughs> I really do hope it's a golden root. I hope so. Because, like, it, Sothis's words are so ominous. <laughs> Mayhap you are confused. Doma's liberation was but a means to an end. We aided you only to save ourselves. Now we have no such incentive. We have not sworn an oath to you and will not come running like hounds at their master's whistle. I would not presume to treat with you thus. I come to position your cooperation as an ally of equal standing. Equal standing, you say? Seems a bit lopsided to me. Where's the profit for us in all this? Profit? Must you always think of such short-sighted terms? Have you ever heard of doing the right thing? You ever heard of pirates, little miss? You'll find we're simple souls. You pay their tithe, you sail in peace. Deny us our due, and we take it by force. We'll pull you out of the water if we see you drowning, but we're not in the business of doing something for nothing. Calm yourself, Mr. Salize. We did not come here to moralize. We came here to talk, and there's more to be said. According to the records recovered after the liberation, relatives of your Doman-born brethren were among the conscripted into the Imperial Army. And as you may be aware, we recently negotiated for the return of said conscripts. Any, alas, will arrive to find no families waiting for them, no homes to grant them shelter. I would ask you to offer them a place in the Confederacy. You would not be rescuing strangers, but welcoming brothers and sisters into your ranks. And has not the Confederacy been in need of new recruits? Oh my god, that is exactly the image. <laughs> Fucking Hubert. You seem well informed of our, our affairs, Lord Hien. The losses we suffered at the Garlean's hands are no secret, but since we drove them out of Doma, the Ruby Sea has come alive with traitors and travelers. So many vessels to tax, so few pirates to tax them. We can do with some more hands on deck, and doubly so if they're familiar with the inner workings of the Empire. Very well, the Confederacy agrees to your request. You will have your ship. 
Before that, you must do something for me. The vessel I have in mind was damaged during the Battle of the Empire. Though we have mended her, she has yet to be declared seaworthy. She is sound enough down below, but when you load her up with conscripts and water, the waterline rises, those upper planks had best be free of cracks. Assuming you want your people to stay dry, you will do me the favor of swimming around the hull to check the weaknesses. That is, if Doman Lords are not averse to getting their robes wet. <laughs> not this Doman Lord. If we each inspect a third of the ship, it'll be done in a, in, a, in a trice. That's the spirit. The ship is moored at Quickscape Pier. Our apprentice shipwright will be on deck to hear your report. Look for a lad named Ihanishi. Ihanishi. Fuck these names. <laughs> and I thought I had a knack for parlaying with pirates. For the record, my previous attempt was an unmitigated success. And yes, I should have quit while I was ahead. At least you hate pirates. <laughs> well, well, I thought the rumors exaggerated, but the young lord lives up to his reputation. At least you literally hate pirates and make fun of them at all times. Why do you think you could parlay with them well? You, in fact, frequently insult their way of life. Get off your mount! On closer inspection, you spot a small crack in one of the planks. I have to go underwater for the next one. Nope. Spect hull plank. No signs of damage here. Hi, I'm the shipwright. Ugh, apprentice shipwright. Did you find anything that might need attention? The section I inspected seems solid enough. Yo, you got a crack. On the port side near the bow, you say? Alright, I'll have a look and see what I can do. My apologies, I seem to have lagged behind. I could float in the gentle sea all day. Otherwise, I'm happy to report no visible cracks or holes in my section of the hull. Y you, you're Lord Hean! The captain sent you to inspect the hull? Kami, have mercy. Forgive us this discourtesy, my lord. Ha! It's quite alright. In fact, I rather enjoyed it. I take it you are of Doma. Yes, my lord. The Imperials took my father away after the uprising, and I had nowhere else to return. Else to turn, the Confederacy became my family. But someone told me they were leasing the conscripts now. Maybe my father will be among them. Not that I can go back. There's no leaving once you joined. Affairs Our Lady. She's seaworthy? Captain, we, we folded and found a small crack in the port side, but I'll have it fixed before you know it. He met the boy. Did he tell you his story? He babbles when he's nervous. Should his father be among the conscripts as he hopes? I mean to give him the choice to leave this life. If he so chooses, I expect you to see they are provided for. I've heard of those who join the Confederacy forswear all ties with kin and homeland. Is the oath so easily put aside? If I allow it. I see in him the lad I was 25 years ago. You say the words, we mean them, but the yearning for home still lingers. My family's long dead, and I know this life is my lot. But he has scarce dipped his toes with us. If there's a life for him in Doma, he should have the chance to live it. Well said. The Emperor's conquest has uprooted many and more, be it in Yangsha or out in the Ruby Sea. We have a duty to ensure that Ihanishi and others like him are free to dwell where they desire. Matter is settled. We will make preparations to cast off. Well, my friends, it seems we have our ship. Let us return to the Enclave. Wanna go fight the sexy primal? What? Who said that? Primals can't be sexy. They're the bad guys. Usually horrific monsters. <laughs> Lord Ian is expecting you. May I show you in? The 
Seems Yugiri and Alfino completed their task before us. They have been waiting. We scouted the structure and determined the swiftest path to safety. In the event of hostilities, we will lead the conscripts outside with all possible haste. From here, the Confederacy has pledged a ship to ferry us across the One River. Now we have but to attend to the exchange and pray that the Kami, these precautions were unnecessary. Here we are. Here's the quest. While we were putting our contingency plans in place, I left Hakuro in charge of organizing transport for the Imperial prisoners. You will see they arrive at the appointed hour, leaving us free to rendezvous with our Confederate allies. Come, they await us on the riverbanks, not far from the castrum. Sexy primal time. Uh... I should probably take the boat, but I'll just fucking fly. Yeah, the music to this primal is just god soaking outdid himself compared to the rest of the music in Stormblood. Because like Susano's theme is pretty good, and Lakshmi's theme is pretty good, but. Yeah, god no. Just the, the next theme is is heart wrenching. The the the, the what the fuck are they called? The, are they the technically the, the four lords? The four lords themes are pretty pretty good too. Stormblood was a whole expect a pretty good music, but I think out of all of them, my favorite primal is still probably the next one as far as music and and theme really. Oh no, Shinryu. Shinryu was real fucking good too. I forgot about him. He had a pretty good theme for the last one of the main story. Your party's assembled then. Aye, I'm ready for what lies ahead. I trust. Lest there be any confusion though, the tower across the water is to be the scene of the exchange. That and whatever else Asahi has planned. But regardless of the ambassador's intentions, we will bring our people home. Yugiri, you are to evacuate the conscripts at the first sign of trouble. Yes, my lord. We, meanwhile, shall cover their escape, and lend what support we can. Ship awaits you at the Castrum's loading docks. She will see you safely home. Then all stands ready to play their part. Come, let us be about it. Look at all these weird containers. Press 1 if containers contain flowers. Press 2 if doubt. At last, the hour has come. The conclusion to these negotiations will mark a new beginning for Dorma and the Empire. A first step on the road to peaceful coexistence. Indeed. We are ready to proceed with the exchange when you are. <clears throat> Forgive my curiosity, Ambassador, but is there a purpose to these containers you bring with you? Oh, the supply crates. They are filled with materials we hoped might be of use in Dorma's restoration. I meant to gift them to you at our last meeting, but we had so much else to discuss. Press F to doubt. How very generous. I confess I had not expected such compassion. Welcome, though it is. But then I was also surprised by the news that one of our captives had delivered herself into your custody ahead of time. A minor discrepancy I shall overlook in the spirit of the occasion. Are you perhaps referring to me, Lord Hyo? Sexy villain's back! Relative Villa 14. Yotsuyu. Orphan of the Nayori. Widow of Sashihai. And acting viceroy of Dorma. You and your people are mine to govern. Mine to punish. Well, well. It would seem your shattered mind is mended. As per our agreement with the ambassador, 
You are free to return with him to the Empire. Your authority as acting Viceroy, however, is no longer recognized here. <laughs> My position is not for you to decide, little lordling. All who resist the rule of the Empire must be purged. Such was the order given to me by Lord Zenos himself. I will reign here in this putrid, pestilent swamp until the last of you has been broken. shall shine uncaring cold and distant as the moon rise pikachu face crystals what has you done ah eh, nothing She's turning herself into a primal. Oh, sue you. Suki Yomi. A dormant citizen has called forth an icon in direct violation of our primary agreement. The negotiations have failed. Abandon the captives and make preparations to withdraw. But Ambassador. Disobey me, Pylos, and you disobey the Emperor. Make preparations to withdraw! I turned her into a primal and it's their fault. <laughs> Even though I did it totally on purpose because I'm an asshole. As you command. <sighs> oh, Maxima, you're a good egg. Yes, you can't fight primals. That's my job. Leave this to me. Ah, against such a foe, I would be more hindrance than help. The field is yours. We will withdraw, but not without our countrymen. I want every soul accounted for. Every soul. My lord. strength which flows from that baleful light of yours. But I have become Skuyomi, goddess of the moon and divinity of night. What power can compare to such celestial majesty? Mine. My power. I shall plunge all I despise into darkness. And within that black abyss, even your light 
shall flicker and fail. Come, let us cast the stalks and look upon the fate of dawn. I see a future in which the sun sets on this wretched land. Once and for all! And here's the part where me and my seven friends can queue to fight this battle. Or I could just fight it by myself. I'm pretty sure I could solo her. So we're gonna try. It's so heart-wrenching. Like, you're supposed to hate her. At the start of the game, she's fucking killing people left and right. Like, stomping on people. Gives no fucks. Literally steps on people. Uh, she's that kind of villain, you know. Uh, and like, it's just, you have no reason to like her. And they're like, alright... She was kind of abused as a child, but she's still terrible. Oh yeah, her stepbrother also fucking didn't pay any attention. Oh, she got sold to a whorehouse. Oh, she's just fucking... Oh, she's dead. You killed her. But wait, she's not dead, and now she's forgotten everything and acts like a child. Just kidding, she got her memories back, and now she's a primal. It's just like, God, fucking roller coaster. <laughs> Literally, though, she does step on people. <laughs> like, she is purely the step-on-me type. <laughs> All right, unrestricted party. Uh, da -da -da -da. Stormblood, Astrum Fluminus. You and me, Yatsuyu. You were gonna kill yourself, then your parents showed up. Gosetsu does not want you to kill yourself. Gosetsu wants you to live a happy life. Even though you shot him in the abdomen multiple times. You mean you don't love flat defense and all of your artifacts? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Alright, trying to think. Is there any mechanic that I cannot solo? I don't think so. I think Susana was the only one I couldn't solo this X-Pack. Because of the, the sword collision. Yeah, don't see why not. You and me... Torment unto death. Your end is near. Oh fuck, they gave a bone stack? I'm bad at this game. I'm gonna die. It's the uh, Alamegan National Anthem, but in a minor key. I wouldn't want the pain to grow familiar. Wow, that actually did enough to like chunk my hot bar a little. Good for you. You're you're working, Tukiyomi. You're trying. I did have a vault stack though. That's that's fair. Phase? Well, mid phase. Mid phase, which is very sad. Very sad mid phase. Why does it fade away? Ah, I understand. Feeds on my spite. Suffering. Come forth, shades of the dead. Curse my name. Strike my body. Fill my soul with blackest malice. Spectre of the matriarch, specter of the patriarch, her parents. Worthless excuse for a daughter. You're nothing but trouble. 
font of misery. That's what you are. of Asahi, the brother who let it all happen. Fight like your life depends on it, dear sister. You wouldn't want to disappoint me. It isn't the cold-blooded little worm always crawling through my rotten heart. Asahi, you more than any other. Your pitiful fortunes can bring you no lower. Spectre of Xenos himself. You come to deliver my judgment for my failures. Cut me down, then. Surely it's a simple task. Be gone. Stay behind me, Suyu. Ah, you have no place here. Spectre of Gosetsu. The good boy who should not... The good boy who should hate her, but didn't. Showed her a better kindness. You must survive, Suyu. The Kami spared us, and we cannot repay the boon in death. Perhaps, but it is too late for me. There can be no redemption. A night bloom shall flower here at the sight of my demise. Careful not to stay on one side of the platform for too long, otherwise you get doom and die.
It is far from over. My bloodied hands have much left to accomplish. Gonna be really spicy. Running out of cooldowns. Luckily, I'm a paladin. What is dying really? Yeah, so it's just gonna repeat the fan and stuff over again. This is like a like a really soft and rage probably. This is really not supposed to be in these fights this long, but the normal versions don't have enrage timers. Or at least if the, the rage timers they have are incredibly long. I think my friend and I enraged a normal Alex once and it took like it took a very long time. Pretty sure because it's clemency, it just can't die. There's really no point in worrying about it. Aladania got free heals for itself. Oh, Yatsu, you. First sad. Okay, something very satisfying is about to happen. She's also dying. That's not satisfying. But something satisfying comes with her dying. <laughs> Oh, he did it. He would have lived, but Ozzy just shot her in the abdomen. So now she won't. Fucking Ozzy.
You really must learn to finish the job. Tis true that a gaudy mirror and a handful of crystals make for a feeble summoning. But even the weakest icon is a god of sorts. A threat that must be put down. My, my! Such hostility! These beings are the sworn enemies of the Empire. I merely did my duty as an Imperial officer. Will you surrender to anger then? Slay an anointed emissary to avenge a fallen... I wish. Ha! You cannot, of course! To do so would burn the bridges we have labored so hard. You already napalmed those bridges, dude. Oh, yes, yeah, cuz forgetting. They're already ash. This dormant woman has seen to that. The Empire cannot ally itself with any nation that refuses to renounce summoning. I believe I was most clear on that point. <laughs> We're gonna fucking kill this man. I forgot how pissed they made the Warrior of Light look here. It should have been mine. The power he bestowed upon her. I should have been the one to govern Dorma. I would have repaid his fate. No, you, you, I probably would have killed you too. No, no one alive loves him more than I. Oh, Zeus fanboy. Crazy eyes. Instead, this. Harlot betrayed his trust. Useless piece of filth. Worthless whore. Wham. So satisfying. As you kick her on the ground. Thank you, dear brother, for this precious gift. Vengeance. These people, our people, they ignore the corruption which festers beneath the surface. Cast aside that which is dirty and broken. Speak not of things which would disrupt their dreary little lives. Like you, Asahi. Always pretending not to see. You were the first. The first I swore to kill. Now, now I am satisfied. You should feel honored, dear brother. I saved the last of my strength just for you. What's the matter? The Witch of Dorma will soon be dead. So you deserved a kinder fate. A happy 
happiness was never to be. Not in this world. I wonder, was the fruit as sweet as he remembered? Now is not the time for a fever dream. Lord Zenos. Fucking dude. I am at your disposal. Asai, you were born of Doma. Yes. Yes, my lord. I am honored that you would remember me. How may I serve? You are hereby appointed ambassador plenipotentiary and empowered to speak with the voice of the emperor. Return to your native land of Doma and announce your intention to sue for peace. For peace? Once negotiations are underway, you are to locate the acting Viceroy. She lives? Uh, that is to say, I will, my lord. When you have found her, you will initiate a ritual to call forth an icon. I will instruct you in the necessary steps. Yotsuyu's faith is unreliable. But as a child raised to believe in the Kami, she will serve as a vessel for one of the Kojin's gods. She need only wish it to be so. The power will seem a gift, but the icon's essence will consume her. She will be no more than a husk, a slave to whim and desire. My lord, ever since the day you saw fit to save my miserable life, I have dreamed of repaying your benevolence. Upon my honor, I swear to devote myself wholly to your service. All that you command will be done, no matter the cost. But, but, I fear the subtleties of your plan yet elude me. From the reports I have heard, the champion who aids the Dolmen resistance would make short work of a single icon. The icon is merely a message. The pacifist teachings of the popularis spread through this city like a plague. And I would remind the people of the threat we face. You will be my chosen agent. The hand which tolls the warning bell. The salvation of this world will not be won through the signing of treaties. Your chosen agent. I will not fail you, my lord. And also he clearly didn't know Zenos, because listening to him talk again, it's like, that sounds nothing like him. Like... Xenos would not talk that much to you, of all people. <laughs> my, my master, Lord Xenos, he will come for you. Xenos slit his own throat. You're just an idiot. And now you're dead. Ha ha. Killed by the sister you manipulated. You have prevailed, I see. 
Oh, go Setsu. She is gone. Wherefore did the Kami spare us? Only to inflict this pain. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate believing in gods that just like keep you from dying when you're so ready to die and then just killing off the other person later, but not you. Death shall not want for company this day. You spared us a worse disaster. But I fear our fledgling peace with the Empire was beyond saving. Lord Hian! Maxima's a good boy. Maxima, is it not? I assumed you long fled. I entertain thoughts of escape even now. But our negotiations have yet to reach a satisfying conclusion. The ambassador insisted that the summoning spelled an end to our mission here. But it seemed to me there was more to the tale. Saw a vision of Asahi's past. I have heard tell of this power you wield. And in your vision, you witnessed Lord Xenos giving these orders. But how can that be? Xenos is dead. He took his own life after the battle in Alamigo. I saw his body with my own eyes. Forgive me, but Lord Xenos is very much alive. He granted our party an audience prior to our departure. That he was gravely wounded is certain, but his recovery appeared to be proceeding apace. I'm afraid I share Lord Hien's confusion. The man's death was confirmed and his remains interred. These are matters of public record. I have no doubt you believe what you say, but what then is the explanation? That an imposter has infiltrated the innermost circle of the Imperial Court? The idea is inconceivable, absurd, but worthy of investigation nonetheless. Our movement can ill afford to have a highly placed pretender undermining our efforts. Your efforts may yet bear fruit. Tell me, what is to become of our prisoner exchange? Though we have already taken custody of our conscripts, we have yet to release your Imperial comrades. Do you still intend to collect them? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. As the late Ambassador's second-in-command, it falls to me to speak on the Empire's behalf. And I'm happy to confirm our intent to proceed according to the original agreement. Then let us be about it. It would be a pity to abandon such a promising beginning. Indeed. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. As soon as our people are secure aboard our airship, we shall depart straightways for Galamo. Tread lightly, Pilus. I sense treachery awaits you there. Might I accompany you to the capital? Alphano, have you gone mad? Imposter or no, if Xenos was instructing Asahi on the finer points of ritual summoning, an experience tells us there is an Asian waiting in the wings. Without our knowledge and expertise, our new friends will be hard pressed to contend with a foe for whom death is but a minor inconvenience. They need our help. Were you indeed willing to share your knowledge of this enemy, we would not shun your counsel. You truly mean to do this? In full knowledge of the danger? I have seen the Warrior of Light risk her life on countless occasions. Next to her, I'm scarce more than a distraction on the battlefield. But in the meeting room or the audience chamber, there I can make a difference. I can strike bargains, forge ties, and change minds. And where better to do these things than in the home of our old enemy? I believe in you, Alfie, now. Is not 
for me to stop you. But I would have you consider an alternative arrangement. Rather than braving the Empire as a simple traveler, go forth as an emissary of Dorma. Such a position should offer you some measure of protection. Go then. You've obviously made up your mind. Just try not to do anything reckless, all right? I shall be on my best behavior. Farewell, my friends. Oh, Alfino, no. you're a good boy. I knew Asi was planning some manner of treachery, but a summoning. Thank the Kami you were here, my friend. None of us would have escaped Yatsuyu's vengeance had you not intervened. He was a pawn, aye, but still she had a choice, and she chose to submit to the Ambassador's plan. A little wondered Gosetsu departed in silence. I gather he left the same way as he came, aboard, alone aboard a rowing boat. As for the conscripts, most made it to the Sekibune before the battle began in earnest, but the vessel yet awaits on the riverbank for those who did not flee in time. Then I suggest we put this doleful place behind us and make for the Enclave together. It would be a shame to miss the joyous reunion. Often have I imagined this moment. Thank you for helping it come to pass. all those happy reunited families and friends ah there you are and now you're ugly Setsu, your hair. My friend, what have you done? In a crisis and shaved his head. An old man who cannot raise his blade has no place in the service of a young lord. Thus did I decide to devote my remaining days to pilgrimage. I will walk this land, offering prayers of repose for all the souls who left this life in suffering.
all of them. Safe travels, Gosetsu. <laughs> A fulsome farewell makes for an enjoyable journey. Scarcely have we said our goodbyes to Alpha now, and you leave us too. But tis well that my companions find their own way forward. I must endeavor to do the same. I have faith that you will find the best path for Dorma without me, my lord. Pray forgive me this last act of selfishness, and grant me your blessing. You have earned it a thousand times over. Go in peace, my friend. I shall make of Doma a land where children laugh, and none need live in fear. There is no better way to honor those who went before. With that, I take my leave. Motherfucker, you save us from a roof collapsing on our heads. We think you're dead. You survive on a desert island along with your enemy. You come back, and now you just fucking leave again after shaving your head. What a life you leave, my lead, my man. What a life. I don't understand why he shaved his head. He's ugly as fuck. <laughs> something, something, monk, something, something. Ah, Gosetsu. Fair journey to you, my friend. A bittersweet occasion, but there is yet ample cause to be grateful. Pray, join us in the Kayankin. I would thank you properly. We're almost done with this patch. I actually did manage to finish it tonight. That should be the part. Our brothers and sisters are returned to us, and the dreams of Doma's restoration is that much closer to being realized. It is a day that we l live long in memory, that will live long in memory, and one that would never have dawned without the courageous actions of the Scions. On behalf of Doma and her people, we give you our deepest thanks. Lest you think me complacent, I assure you I have not forgotten the dark cloud on the horizon. That Xenos lives is a source of grave concern, mayhap the gravest. But there's little to be done but wait for Alfina to send word. Until then, I plan to devote myself to fulfilling the promise I made to Gosetsu by building a nation in which none need live in fear. Ugh, I confess I miss him already. But the thought that he has at last found peace goes some way to softening the blow. I wonder, did you ever stop to ask yourself why he showed Yatsuyu such kindness? I believe the answer lies in past tragedy, specifically the death of his wife and daughter during the invasion. Though he hid it well, they were never far from his thoughts, and in Yatsu's childlike man, I believe he saw not a fallen tyrant, but a little girl who was lost to him. After the loss of his family, Gosetsu devoted himself wholly to the service of his country. He suffered any hardship, strove beyond the limits of endurance without hesitation or complaint. Though Tsuyu could never truly replace his daughter, I had hoped that with her at his side, he might live out the remainder of his days in relative contentment. Would that the Kami had been so minded. Even now I labor to discern any meaning in Yatsuyu's fate. To deliver her from certain death with no memory of her sins, only to leave her at the mercy of her stepbrother. Can that truly have been their will? That I cannot tell you. The will of the Kami is not for us to know. What I do know is that for a brief moment, a girl known as Suyu lived among us. And that she brought with her a whisper of a respite for a grieving heart. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's quest. I think it's time we were going, don't you? We've done all we can, and we have a lot to report. 
Before we head back into the Rising Stones, let us call it in at Rogger's Reach. We should be the ones to tell Lisa about Xenos. After everything we went through together, we owe her that. The patch name was Under the Moonlight. So, once we finish this quest, that should be part three completed in one big shebang, and I will call it a, call it a night. Plan is tomorrow to resume, finally, after three years of waiting, uh, Tales of Berseria. That's a game that has not been streamed here on this channel in a hot minute. Or at least Xenos is alive, but not alive because it's actually an Asian. Because we totally saw him slit his throat. He's definitely dead. Definitely. And Liana, Alize, you're back. Hmm. No Alfie now? Good to see you, Lise. As for my headstrong brother, he's off on what will almost certainly turn out to be a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Garlemald. It's a long story, but we have evidence that Xenos might still be alive. What? But that's... This is a joke. Gods, this better be a joke. Look. I know what I saw, all right? We all saw it. And here you are saying that he's alive and well and living the high life back in Garlemald. I know how ludicrous it sounds. I'm still having difficulty believing it myself. But while I might doubt the word of an Imperial envoy, I'm inclined to trust Kinliana's. She saw the crown prince through the Echo in a meeting that could only have taken place in the recent past. It's him. It was Xenos. He even had a band-aid on his throat because he fucking slid it. God, he's not alive. No, it must have been, I don't know, some kind of really convincing imposter. Xenos is dead. We had a great big hole in his neck. We buried him. I and someone who went to trouble of desecrating the bastard's grave, remember? Halls, gilded halls, whatever are you talking about? Thancred? Thancred, what brings you to the Reach? Alfino has me lending a hand at the Saltiri, keeping an eye on the rebuilding work and so on, just until operations were up and running. Now that they are, I thought I might look in on you before wending my way back to my headquarters. Forgive me if I misheard, but there's some suggestion that the late Crown Prince could have gotten better. If so, might I suggest a quick look inside his coffin as our first order of business? Ugh, as much as I hated the man, it doesn't feel right defiling his grave. But if it'll put this rumor to rest, I suppose we have to. And when there are no curious eyes about, we could manage it. Zenos is buried up at Bloodhow in the locks. His grave was set apart from the others and left unmarked so as to not upset the locals. It shouldn't be Tardar fine. Nago, you're in charge until I get back. Blah, 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 blah. I haven't seen an Ixian fate pop in a while. I'm not sure how many people would bother to run it, but... Yeah, Ixian... Odin and Be Behemoth. Especially Behemoth. I haven't seen a Behemoth fate notification in a long time. Everyone's too busy focusing on Chi. This is it. Gods, he'd better still be in there. Someone scrawled all over the stone a while ago, but I had scrubbed off and thought no more about it. So no one thought to check if the coffin was still occupied. Well then, we are presented with but one course of action. And we'd best be sure we're not observed in doing it. Shall we begin?
Oh dear. We seem to be missing a corpse. Well, it must be somewhere. I only hope it isn't walking around. Ariel is in man, watching us open Xenos' grave. Has the appearance of a resistance man, but judging by the ominous looking he just gave us, probably not. If there's no corpse, then we to conclude the rumors are true. Not necessarily. We might still be dealing with a doppelganger of some kind. An agent could have been sent to dispose of the body and bait it to lend credence to the tale of Xenos' resurrection. More and more, however, I find myself siding with Alfino's theory of Asian possession. Speaking from experience, I can tell you they have no qualms about taking a living host, let alone a dead one. Saying an Asian is walking around in Xenos' body? Seems a distinct possibility. Once I have put this grave back the way we found it, I shall pay a visit to the people responsible for interring the Crown Prince. Or leaping to any conclusions, I wanted to be sure that if a body was ever buried here. Now certain we are that Xenos was properly dead. If he wasn't, then it was some trick. He's a good cut of he, he, he as good as cut his own head off. Anyway, Robin needs to hear about this. If you find anything out, send word to Rogger's Reach. Uh, I don't know why I'm surprised. But with matters, matters setting down in Doma, we were due for another crisis. Shall we make for the Rising Stones, then? It's past time we shared these developments with the others. While I was waiting for you to arrive, I spoke with Urianje over Link Pearl and gave him the full report. She stole us on her way and should be here any- Ah! Elise, Kiliana, it is good to see you safe and well. What news have you from the East? Oh, you stole if only you fucking knew. Disturbing developments indeed. Given all that we know, uh, I too would conclude that Anassian now inhabit inhabits Xenos' body. A doppelganger might fool the Crown Prince's subordinates, but Kiliana? Nay, Alfino had the right of it. Would that his wisdom extended to the question of his own safety. Capable though he has become, he ventures alone into enemy's stronghold, in the shadowy web of the Paragons like this knot. When it comes to making rash decisions, I am hardly in a position to criticize, but... I'm worried. I just wish there was something I could do for him besides pray. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace of Doom... Cannot suffer icons to exist. Was I not clear on this point? More than clear. The icon in question was summarily dispatched by the Warrior of Light. The summoner is dead, and the right beyond repeating. Everything was proceeded according to plan, every party behaving exactly as required. My methods may seem extreme, but there is no cause for concern. I work only to ensure the salvation of this star. Hmm? What are you doing fiddling with that thing? I asked you a question, soldier.
What are you? You lost your mind. I've lost many things, but my mind is yet my own. There upon the stage I stood, prepared to make my final bow, only to find that the finale was but an intermission. Shall I use this chance to repent my sins? Embrace goodness and mediocrity? Nay, I think not. While the one I yearn to face yet lives, the hunt must go on. Oh, Xenos trapped in the body of a Twinkie Elf. But if Xenos is in the body of a Twinkie Elf, who's in Xenos's body? It's an Asian. Like they said, it's a, it's an Asian. I even know which Asian. But how did Xenos end up in the body of a Twinkie Elf? Find out next time on Final Fantasy XIV. What do you mean that's not the end of part three? Fuck! <laughs> uh, fuck. Alright. But that's patch... Is that only patch 4.2? Maybe that's only patch 4.2. I have to look and see. I feel like... I thought I thought Under the Moonlight was patch 4.3. Yeah, patch 4.3 was Under the Moonlight. Fuck! Hold on. Um... Request list. Oh, this next quest is the last one in the patch. Oh, it's not worth it to do just one quest for a part. Fuck! I guess I'm doing it tonight. <laughs> like, I just, I hate, I don't want to queue up stream next time. I have to do one patch and then that's the part, so... Oh well, you'll stick up a bit longer. <laughs> it's been an eventful few days, hasn't it? But I suppose all we can do now is wait for word of Alfino. Hmm, I still don't recall the last time I had nothing pressing to get be getting on with it with. We should probably make the most of it. Can I put on some tea? You would be lovely. You may regale me of this tale of your adventures in the Far East, and of your encounter with this new primal especially. I'll put the kettle on, then. That table looks free, if you'd like to take a seat. Oh, right! This was the big deal. Yeah, several cutscenes will play in sequence, because this is the first time that they ever did a specific kind of duty. That they really, they really done carry forward. Interesting. So the Tsukiyomi was summoned in much the same manner as Suzano, via the medium of a sacred relic. That's right. They believe their gods, or kami, reside in physical objects. Given the danger they represent, it may behoove us to begin a catalog of such relics. But if we are to contain the threat, we will require a better understanding of the summoning method itself. I believe I shall pay a visit to Doma and learn what I can on the subject. Fine idea. And I know for a fact that our friends in Doma will be grateful for any information which can help to prevent further summoning in the region. I will pen you in a letter of introduction. Lord Hien will wish to welcome our resident expert on etherology. Greetings. Could it be that I'm in time for tea? Certainly looks that way. Come, sit down and tell us how your investigations went. After you left, I went about questioning Bloodhouse gravekeepers. They all told me much the same story. Once Lisa and her officer had confirmed Xenos is dead, Xenos dead, his corpse was interred under strict supervision. There seems little reason to doubt the testimony on that point, but when I mentioned the defacement of Xenos' grave, the crowds grew rather more vague. None reported having seen these suspicious persons in the vicinity, and all assumed the act to have been perpetrated by a vengeful Alamegan. Crucially, however, I was able to confirm that when the offending scrawl was removed, as per Lisa's instruction, no one invo involved thought to check the contents of the coffin. By that stage, it is like that the corpse was already missing. Assuming Xenos has not, in fact, risen from the dead, we are left with two possibilities. Either the body was disposed of to lend credence to the claims of an extremely committed 
uh, imposter, Ornassian has taken up residence within it. If Asahi was as fervent of a de devotee as you believe, he would not have been fooled by an impersonation, however committed. We must assume that we are dealing with an Asian. Proceed accordingly. Agreed. The question is, how many more such monsters are waiting for Alfino and Garlemald? Their presence was his chief reason for going. He understood the risks. I only hope he did not underestimate the extent of the infestation. Meanwhile, on the Imperial Hypersonic Assault Craft L-25. Assuming XXV is 25, since that's two tens and a five. I could be wrong. Master Elfino, we are making good speed towards our destination. Not a miss? Nay, it is just, I can see not from my cabin, and was curious how to know the land over which we flew. Ah, I'm afraid our military craft are built with little thought for such niceties. I am happy to indulge your curiosity, however. We are presently passing over the burn on the western edge of Authord. Even with the benefit of a porthole, your gaze would have been greeted with naught but malms upon malms of lifeless earth. I have read something of the burn. It was described as a desolate wasteland, bled dry of every last drop of ether. Aye, it's believed that a succession of Iscon summonings was responsible. When Emperor Solus first came to Author and, and beheld this blight, he is said to have reeled at the scale of the devastation. He declared Icons a threat to the very star's existence and issued an empire-wide decree ordering the eradication of all such entities. Fucking Solus. Oh, Emperor Solus. Report! We're under attack, sir. Magitek armor. No visible designation. Magitek? But who? Gah! All cannons return fire. Damage report. The main reactor's been hit. Helm's unresponsive. We're going down, sir. Damn it. They knew exactly where to hit us. All hands, brace for impact. Glad to have you back, Master Alfino. We've landed in one piece, more or less. But the air filtration system is damaged, and the ship is filling with smoke. We must gather the survivors and get out while we still can. Aye. Aye. What do you mean, a duty? Oh? But my character is in the Rising Stones. Oh my god, I'm playing as Alfino. Yeah, this is the first time I did this, and it's not gonna be the last. <laughs> Master Alfino, might I ask you to search for survivors? I will see to our injured helmsman. Thanks. I don't think I would have made it. Yes, he very likely saved his life. The question of who would try to take it remains, however. But the last few out of their misery, the prince wishes none left alive. Prince? It come... not come to parley, I fear. Ready your weapons. Oh my god, this is old try to bind. It actually has the fucking binding effect on it. It's amazing. Uh, 
have Tribon just cost a thousand MP. I only just realized how low I am. Confound it. Not here. Not like this. Saved by a mysterious stranger standing very badassly on a hill with a gun blade. Who is this mysterious stranger? We don't know. What? Who in the Empire's name? Enemies of our enemies. Introductions can wait. We're calling a crisis, Master Alfino. Let us finish this then. <laughs> there are bullets in some of the gun blades in this game. Um, the uh the gun blade, the, the, the gun breaker class has a, has a gun blade that has actual bullets in it. Yeah, it's actually very cool. Um, you can see in the, uh, in the trailer for Shadowbringers when they're advertising Gunbreaker, um, the character Thancred turns into one of them in the next X-Pack and you see him reloading a chamber of like six bullets. And they talk about how the enchanted ammunition, he can't channel Aether, so he has to have someone else enchant his ammunition. The Emperor, that man's a fiend. Cross formation, deploy restraints. Bah, a child's trick. Alright, they all seem to be attacking one. Probably attack the same one as them, huh? a boy uh, menacing mercenary I almost said his real name I would have spoiled the surprise even though we won't find out until next part the man no one expected to come back and then Square Enix was like he comes back and by the way he's kind of hot you're like alright fair enough <laughs> My thanks. Your intervention proved most timely.
Well, well, I did not think to meet an Eorzean in this place, let alone a Scion. You know of me, sir. I have some small history, your order. But I would speak of the present, know your assailants, and the severity of your predicament. Soldiers bore the insignia of the Emperor's personal guard. And I could vesture, venture a guess as to their motive, but you have yet... You yet have us at an... Words are hard! And I could venture a guess as to their motive, but you have yet... You yet have us at a disadvantage, sir. Will you not tell us who you are? Our names are not yours for the asking. And as for our purpose, let this be your answer. An Asian mask. The face of our prey. We must away before more arrive. Come with us or stay, but make your choice now. Even should we manage the long trek out of the burn and secure passage to the capital, we would no doubt be greeted by the Emperor's guard. Indeed, we will accept your gracious offer. Uh... Shadowhunter will suffice for the present. Come. Elfina is so little. Little elf man. One day you'll hit your growth spurt and you'll be very tall. What's that third mask? That's not an Asian's mask! I'm sure your brother's fine. <laughs> oh, this is intolerable. But as much as I wish it were otherwise, there's nothing we can do for Alfino now but pray for his success. Well, that's not entirely true. While your brother journeys to Gar Garlemald from the east, I could make my way there from El Amigo to find out what there is to be learned in the Empire's western provinces. And I'm coming with you. I can't very well sit here, sipping tea, if there's action to be taken. Forgive me, Alize, but the provinces are hostile territory and stealth is, is all important. It's safer that I go alone. I can sneak well enough when the situation demands it. Don't patronize me. You should leave this to Thancred. Not you too. I understand your frustration, Alize, but Kinleon has the right of it. You must defer to Thancred's expertise in this matter. Ugh, fine, just promise you'll be careful. Seems that praying is going to be the extent of my contribution after all, but I will stay behind as I've been t bid. We all have our talents. Mine just happens to involve a silver tongue and soft souls. I promise to send word the moment I learn aught of consequence. See that you notify me too. I mean to depart for Doma as soon as I find suitable East Aldernod vessel to bear me hither. But I shall return if I am needed. Here to drop in whenever you're next in the area, Kinliana. With any luck, I'll have a painfully detailed report from Alfina to share. And now all three of them are just going to disappear into the ether. Oh, okay. Two of them are going to walk away, probably. There we go. Poof. You've completed Stormblood Part 3. Exiting New Game Plus mode. Tatru, you weren't standing there a minute ago. When did you learn to teleport? So Alfino has gone off into Garlemald, the land of angry people. He super is in danger. <laughs> Super duper danger. Big danger bongos.
Uh, but, you know, we don't know that. All we know is that, uh, you know, he went off on a magical journey. <laughs>